اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم اللہ کی پناہ چاہتا ہوں شیطان مردود سے بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم اللہ کے نام سے شروع جو نہایت مہربان رحمت والا Inshallah, starting our meeting, uh, the MC for the meeting at uh, the event tonight would be Sheikh Fayyaz. Uh, he'll be looking after all the program and uh, in between some other people will come in, Inshallah, because he's a speaker too. So, Brother Sheikh Fayyaz, would you come on? Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillahi wahdah, wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'dah. أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما Honorable guests both young and elderly respected ulama and community leaders notably فضيلة الشيخ شيخ جمال حمود and our chairman for the Muslim Council of Calgary, Brother Ibrahim Ayash, our distinguished keynote speaker, Brother Ahmed Karim Sheikh, who is to the right of Sheikh Jamal Hamoud. And for those of us who do not know, Brother Ahmed Karim Sheikh was born into the tradition and the teachings of Mirza Ghulam Kajiani. And Alhamdulillah, Thumma Alhamdulillah, because Alhamdulillah is the one who led us to this. Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala guided him back towards the true pristine teachings of Muhammad Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on behalf of the Muslim community of Calgary. And again, the Muslim Council of Calgary. I would like to both welcome and thank each and every single one of you for taking out your precious time this beautiful Sunday afternoon. in helping us establish as a community the first annual Khatma Nabuwa Symposium, Takbir. Oh. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is reported to have said, Man lam yashkurin nas lam yashkurin lah. That whosoever does not thank the people, this person has not thanked Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Again, on behalf of our chairman, Brother Ibrahim Ayash, the Muslim Council of Calgary, and its a dozen plus affiliate organizations. I would like to thank all of you, and without you, the symposium would not be established as it is today. Without further ado, as it is the ethical right for any function to commemorate or commence with the recitation of Quran al Karim, I would like to call upon Hafiz Saeed Qureshi, who will be reciting a few verses before us. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان على النبي حرج فيما فرض الله له سنة الله الذين سنة الله في الذين خلوا من قبل وكان أمر الله قد رم قدورا الذين يبلغون رسالات الله ويخشونه ولا يخشون أحدا إلا الله وكفى بالله حسيبا ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين وكان الله بكل شيء عليما يا أيها الذين آمنوا 
اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة وعشيا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اذكروا الله ذكرا كثيرا وسبحوه بكرة وعشيا وسبحوه بكرة وأصيلا هو الذي يصلي عليكم وملائكته ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور ليخرجكم من الظلمات إلى النور وكان بالمؤمنين رحيما تحيتهم يوم يلقونه سلام وأعد لهم أجرا كريما صدق الله ومولانا العلي العظيم in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, I will now recite the translation of the few ayat that I've recited. There can be no difficulty to the Prophet in, one, in what Allah has indicated to him. As a duty, it was the practice approved of Allah amongst those of old that have passed away. And the command of Allah, it is a decree determined. It is the practice of those who preach the messages of Allah and fear him and fear none but Allah, and enough is Allah to call men to account. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not the father of any of your men, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has full knowledge of all things. O you who believe, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with much remembrance, and glorify him morning and evening. He it is who sends blessings on you, as do his angels, that he may bring you out from the depths of darkness into light. And he is full of mercy to the believers. Their salutation on the day when they meet him will be peace. And he has prepared for them a generous reward. I will now call upon the Sheikh Fayaz to take over. MashaAllah, what a beautiful recitation. And subhanAllah, one of the verses that Hafiz Sa'id recited was, مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا آدِمْ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَاكِرْ وَصَلَى اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ And he already explained or translated the verse. And this reminds me of a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari, where the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanAllah, he is reported to have said, إِنَّ مَثَلِي وَمَثَلَ الْأَنْبِيَا مِنْ قَبْلِي كَمَثَلِ رَجْلٍ بَنَا بَيْتًا فَأَحْسَنَهُ he said, my similitude in comparison with the other prophets before me is that of a man who has built a house nicely and beautifully. Illa Except for a place of one brick in a corner. So, the people go about this beautiful home and they wonder at its beauty. But they say, only if that brick was put in its place. Thereafter, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he concluded this tradition by saying, فَأَنَا اللَّبِنَا وَأَنَا خَاتِمُ النَّبِيِّينَ I am that brick and I am the last of prophets. Moving along with the program, I would like to call upon our chairman, Brother Ibrahim Ayyash, to give the welcoming address, insha'Allah. Sorry, I'm going to get your tie. So, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I would like to welcome you all here today to the Muslim Council of Calgary Khatman Nubuwa Symposium 
and thank all of you for attending and being a part of such a noble and honorable gathering. I will start out by thanking our guests who have accepted the invitation of the Muslim Council of Calgary and the invitation of our senior Imam, Imam Jamal Hamoud, to be here today, brothers Badiuddin Suharwardi and brother Ghalib Chisti. I would like to thank our senior Imam for working hand in hand with the Muslim Council for his strong efforts to unite our community and his hard work on this symposium. As well, I would like to thank Imam Fayyaz Tali, our MC and symposium moderator. Also, the Calgary Imams Council, Brother Najah Al Hajj, past MCC chair, for his work. Brother Muzaffar Ahmed, President of our Islamic Center of South Calgary and his board members, Sheikh Hafiz Shafiq, and all of the volunteers uh, that make all of the events of the Muslim Council of Calgary possible and successful, as well, uh, Brother Arab Jilani. Inshallah, we have a special guest with us today who uh, is an ex Qadiani. Uh, Brother Ahmed Karim. Inshallah, today we will remember and focus on a major and fundamental part of our aqidah. It is something so integral and critical that if you claim to change it, you may exit the folds of Islam and innovate something that only the reckoning of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is suitable for. Unfortunately, these days, some groups have made innovations and they have deviated from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the point where some have laid claim to prophethood. May we seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from innovations and claims that lead to such. Inshallah, today, in unity and in solidarity, we aim to continue in reviving the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today, let us examine certain innovations and false claims that lead some astray. Yet, they make hundreds upon hundreds of millions more steadfast and ready to answer the call of our Creator in the manner, the final and last messenger the seal of the prophets, our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Let us make a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala today and a promise to ourselves. Let's promise to search back to the fundamental elements of our religion. Let's answer the call of our Lord together and strive to be as our khulafa and sahaba. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with all of them. Ameen. Our senior Imam, Imam Jamal, told us a beautiful story during his most recent khutbah, during Jum'ah prayers. He told the story of a man whom the Prophet, peace be upon him, asked, What have you prepared for the day you meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And the man said he prepared much more than his obligation. He prepared not much more than his obligations. However, he said that he loves Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he loves his messenger alayhi salatu wasalam. The Prophet peace be upon him said, you are with those whom you love. And also, you will and be with those who with love those Allah who subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to resurrect us together. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I hope you enjoy your time with us today. And I want to let you know that our doors and our hearts are always open. جزاكم الله خير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Inshallah, before we introduce our next speaker, as Abu Ibrahim mentioned, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, "المرء رحم الأحد." That a person will be resurrected with those whom he loves. And it reminded me of a story of Bilal radiallahu anhu. When he was on his deathbed, Taqul was awjatu. His wife was wailing and lamenting, saying, Wa'a musibata, 
What a great misfortune. What a sad day. Bilal he was suffering the sakarat of the mouth. He was under here in Calgary. Uh, without further ado, because I am taking up his time right now, I would like to call upon Ustaz uh, Sheikh Salman Hamoud, inshaAllah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, والصلاة والسلام الأتمان الأكملان على سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وقدوتنا محمد بن عبد الله خاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين My dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam Since we started to hear about that the followers of one of the sects of religion they started to be active in the city of Calgary and using the Qur'an and the Sunnah for their own benefits. Me and my brothers became very anxious to have meeting or gathering like this, having all of people who care about the Aqeedah of Islam, the Aqeedah of the Holy Quran, the Aqeedah of Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is the first time for all of us to have symposium or gathering or conference or meeting like this in this center represents the Muslims of Calgary in general. I knew that in different areas, mashallah, our brothers, they have or they had conferences before about Khatm al nubuwa But to have it here in this center, we are not only targeting those who do not the real aqidah of Islam but one of our objectives is to get together and to be united under this umbrella of the Muslims in Calgary MCC as main representative of the Muslims of Calgary with full respect to all of organizations here and since we believe that this association or this majlis or this council has started in the 50s of the last century so we have full respect for the council to implement activities like this and we have to be proud to work under this umbrella to achieve first of all the unity of Muslims here and when you are united believe me you can achieve any goal you like in your life because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala focused on the unity of the Muslims in the Holy Quran. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lil nas ummah. 
وان امه تامرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله you are the best among people among nations not because of your nationalities or your colors but because you join what is right and you forbid what is wrong وان هذه امتكم امه واحده you have to believe that your umma is one umma yes the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in one of his ahadith وستفترق امتي على 73 شعبه and my umma will be divided into 73 شعبه branch all of them are going to hell or most of them are going to hell except one ma ana alayhi wa ashabi those who are following me and my companions allahumma ij'alna minhum ya rabbal alamin o oh allah make all of us from that ummah from that branch so we can be saved in this dunya and in the hereafter الشيء المضحك sometimes you get amazed when some people use this hadith use it that they are from al firqa al najiyah while they do not have the respect of the prophet and the companions of the prophet so in which interpretation they believe or they follow but when we have the full respect the honor for our prophet muhammad alayhi salatu wassalam at least we could consider our servers from his ummah and from the people who love the prophet alayhi salatu wassalam and the people who follow his footsteps in this dunya وددت لو رايت احبابي i wish that i can meet my beloved people the prophet is declaring as-sahaba said ridwan allah alayhim aren't we your beloved people o prophet of god qala bal antum ashabi you are my companions amma ahbabi but my beloved people are the one who are coming later they believe in my sharia ah. they follow my sunnah why they did not meet me or they are not going to meet me so we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us meet the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam in the day of judgment and make us from the people who seek his shafa'ah his intercession ameen ayyuhal ikhwa some people think that we are here in this masjid just to attack some other people that is wrong because we are ummatu da'wa we are the ummah who implement and believe and practice the da'wa of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam القائل لئن يهدي الله بك رجلا واحدا خير لك من حمر النعم وفي روايه خير لك من الدنيا وما فيها وي ار براود تو بي فروم ذا امه اوف دعوه ذا فولورز اوف محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم ذا امه اوف محمد عليه الصلاه والسلام هو كوندكت ذا دعوه ذا سيم دعوه اوف رسول الله اند هيز كومبانيونز ذات از اور رول in this life so it is enough ayyuha al ikhwa to hear today that brother ahmed karim he was one of the fruits of ad da'wa al islamiyah the fruits nobody attack him before to make him follow the sunni sharia the way of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by reading by searching 
by being approached by good people, he, mashallah, was convinced to follow the way of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wasalam. That tells us a dawah is the only way people can use in this life to be united, to be pure Muslims, to be right followers of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to follow the right way and the sunnah and the tradition of Muhammad salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi. So we are here not for accusing or insulting or attacking any group or any sect of religion. We are here to clear the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam and to clean the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam from the people who attacked it. The people who ruined the way of Islam, the people who use the sunnah in different way. We are here to make the haqq as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said about this deen taraktukum ala al-mahajjati al-bayda laynuha kanaharihah la yazihu anha illa halik I have left you with al-mahajjah al-bayda very clear and clean and white evidence which is a sharia al-islamiyya al-gharra laynuha kanaharihah the night of this sharia exactly very clear and bright like the daytime laynuha kanaharihah nobody will be misled except the people who chose to go astray in this life أيها الإخوة The principles of our عقيدة is Allah To believe in Allah The creator of the heavens and earth The one who has our souls in his hand Allah سبحانه وتعالى The one who لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد So any creature attacks Almighty Allah The power of God glory of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we are here to defend that aqidah that belief so the main principle of our aqidah is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so anybody said or says that he is closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than other people sorry to say to him you are mistaken قالت اليهود والنصارى نحن أبناء الله وأحباء قل فلما يعذبكم بذنوبكم بل أنتم بشر ممن خلق The Christian and Jews said as the Quran said We are the children of God and the beloved people of God قل فلما يعذبكم بذنوبكم Tell them O Muhammad عليه الصلاة والسلام Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is punishing you. So I can tell you, you are just normal worshippers, normal creatures. You are not better than us. So if anyone said in any century that I am dhillullahi fil ard, I am the shade of God in this world, we have to tell him you are wrong. So if anybody attacked al-aqeedah billahi sa'ala, as some people said, yeah, sorry to tell them that is wrong. Allah is God, the creator of the heavens and earth. And Numrud said, ana uhi wa umid. The oppressor, the ruler at the time of Ibrahim said, I can cause death and give life. فإبراهيم said إن الله يأتي بالشمس من المشرق فأتي بها من المغرب الله brings the sun from the east if you are like God bring the sun from the west فبهت الذي كفر والله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين so same thing I can say to any person Mirza or other than Mirza in this life you are not God 
because the people who were bigger than you before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made them lessons so we don't believe in any in any power in this world except in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala billahi al-aziz al-hakim our principle of aqeedah is to believe in Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as the final, the end, the seal of the prophets of God. There is no Nabi after him. La Nabi ya ba'di. He made it very clear. There is no prophet after me. Alayhi salatu wa salam. He said in the sunnah and Allah said about him in the Quran. Ma kana Muhammadun aba ahadim min rijalikum. وَلَكِنْ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَخَاتَمَ النَّبِيِّينَ So he is the final, the last, the end, the seal of the prophets, عليه الصلاة والسلام. Anybody believes that he is messenger or believes that there will be messengers or prophets after Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم, he or she is not considered as a believer. Clear. So we have to know this aqeedah. I consider that every and each one of you has to be da'iyah to carry this message to other people. As I said, we are not here to attack or insult any sect of religion, but we are here to renew our aqeedah in Allah and in his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the final prophet of God and each one of you has to be da'iyah inshallah from now on so people won't be misled in this life from the principles of our aqeedah is to believe in the Quran word by word letter by letter so nobody can interpute or take any letter away from the Holy Quran. Alhamdulillah, we have in this center a special institution for Tahfiz al Quran al Kareem that reflects what Al Quran said. Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu We have revealed a dhikr al Quran and we shall protect Al Quran al Kareem till the day of judgment. So there is no power in this life can take any letter away from the Holy Quran or add any letter. We do not allow to anybody in this world to believe that inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira that means this is for Rasulullah Muhammad peace be upon him the one who was born in, in Mecca in 570 Li Isa who is Muhammad Al-Nabi al al Arabi that is the meaning of we are Arsalnaq we have sent you Mubashiran wa Nadira not to anybody else we believe what the Quran said وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ لِقَوْمِهِ وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيَّ مِنَ التَّوْرَاةِ وَمُبَشِّرًا بِرَسُولٍ يَأْتِي مِنْ بَعْدِ اسْمُهُ أَحْمَدْ أَحْمَدْ هو is Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Abdul Muttalib ibn Abd Manaf ibn Hashim ibn Murrat ibn Ka'b ibn Ghalib ibn Lu'ay the son of Ismail the son of Ibrahim alayhi wa ala nabiyyina salatu wa salam this is Ahmad this is Ahmad Muhammad salawatu rabbi wa salamu alayhi so we do not allow to anybody to believe that Ahmad, somebody else, other than Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, khatamul anbiya'i wal mursaleen. That is our principle. 
in the aqidah Allah Muhammad Al Quran Al Karim the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. أيها الإخوة نحن دعاء. We are the Ummah of Adam. Again, I repeat that every minute that we are not here just to accuse or to insult or to swear. This is the Masjid of Allah, the Mosque of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and we are following the Sunnah of Rasulullah. صلى الله عليه وسلم. We are duaat. This is awareness meeting just to remind ourselves with the sunnah of al Islam and with the belief of the Muslims. That is our belief, and this is amana in the chest of every one of you to convey the message of al Islam to al Aswad or al Abyad, the black, the white. The Arab, the Ajam, to everyone to believe in Allah and in the Messenger of Allah, Khatam al Anbiya wal Mursaleen. Ayyuh al Ahibba, we are very happy today to get together here and to clarify few points, and one of them is the principle of the Aqidah. Another thing, it is the unity of the Muslim community. From now on, inshallah ta'ala, this is the house of God. We love to meet every day. If we can make it five times a day, no difference between Sunni Muslims. We love to see every Sunni Muslim comes regularly to this masjid and to support the Muslim Council of Calgary, MCFC, MAC, other organizations. I don't see any problem to have different names, Supreme Council, uh, Mus uh, MCFC, uh, Muslim Association of Calgary. I love to see everyone here in this masjid be one ummah. Be united, you will never be strong and powerful until you be under one umbrella, inshallah, and convey the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As'alu Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala an yuwahida sufufana wa an yajma'ana ala al-huda wa an yuallifa bayna qulubina. I know our guest speakers, they have lots. They have more experience. I was very happy to be two years ago with the brother Shafiq Rahman in Birmingham, participating in the conference of Khatm al Nubuwa. There, I got so much experience from all of my brothers over there, and inshallah, this Mu'tamar will be the beginning, will be the start, and inshallah, will make it bigger and bigger. In the future, I love every one of you. I love every speaker. I like to hear from every speaker the words of Dawa. نحن لا نعظم أنفسنا إنما نعظم دين الله ومن يعظم شعائر الله فإن ذلك من تقوى القلوب. We don't call for our service. We call for the Deen of Allah. And whoever calls for the sake of Allah. For the deen of Allah, Allah will give him the izzah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very thought-provoking speech. Uh, may I remind all the brothers and sisters uh, back there, when Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's name is mentioned, when we say Muhammad, everybody must say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is obligatory, it's not optional. We must say Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For sure, as uh, Sheikh Jamal mentioned, the purpose of this meeting and this event is to remind our brothers and sisters about our Aqeedah, the fundamental Aqeedah of Khadm al -Nabubha. So this is our subject and this is what we are focusing on. 
and this is a reminder this is a education this is talim a tarbiyat of our own community and those who are interested to know about islam uh, without further ado uh, our next speaker is sheikh fayyaz tilli he is our youngest imam he joined our council here in 2002 has been very active and very motivational and effective speaker and uh, i think everybody in the community knows him he has done a lot of service he's running our tahfiz program in this center and if you are interested to uh, send your children into that program you can talk to him mashallah this program is progressing very well jazakallah sheikh fayyaz and uh, it's your turn now For those brothers and sisters uh, who do have children, we do have the gymnasium open um, in the Akram Juma Center. It is your gymnasium, it is your community, it is your facility. Um, by all means, you can, if you feel comfortable under um, uh, um, sending your children to the gymnasium for youth activities, by all means, there are brothers and sisters there who are, who are mature and, and they will take care of your kids as if they are their own, inshallah. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وصحبه الذين اشتبى I think as Brother Muzaffar mentioned um, it is imperative and essential because the Nabi صلى الله عليه وسلم the name his blessed name will be mentioned perhaps hundred if not thousands of time in this blessed gathering and subhanallah the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم the name remember it is after the names of ولله الأسماء الحسنى the name of Allah سبحانه وتعالى it is a name which is most blessed. There is a hadith of Kanz al-Ummal wherein the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam subhanallah is reported to have said مَنْ تُسَلْمَا بِإِسْمِ يَرْجُ بَرَكَتِ غَدَتْ عَلَيْهِ الْبَرَكَةِ وَرَاحَتْ إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ That whosoever is blessed with a male child, if their mother and father name their son Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the intention of receiving blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every morning and every evening until Yawm al-Qiyamah they will be blessed Subhanallah as Uncle Muzaffar mentioned saying the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's name moving our lips when the name of Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa is mentioned not out of fatigue not out of out of a command but rather out of love is an ethical obligation for every Muslim there is a hadith in Mustadrak Sahihain. And in Imam Bayhaqi Raymullah Shu'ab al Iman, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one day he called everyone. He said, Uhbur al Mimbar. He said, Come to the Mimbar. Thereafter, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he ascended the first step and he said, Ameen. He ascended the second step and he said, Ameen. He ascended the third step and he said, Ameen. The Sahaba Ridwan Allah said, Ya Rasulullah, Lakad sabi'ana minka al yawm, shay'a, ma kunna nasna'u. O oh, Prophet of Allah, we heard something from you today that we've never heard before. You've never done this before, Ya Rasulullah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, subhanallah, he said that when I ascended one of the steps, the second step, Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he was there with me and he made a dua and he said, Ba'uda man dhukirta indahu falam yusalli alayhi. Jibreel alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, May the person who after hearing your name does not say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, may this person be distant from the mercy of Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala to which an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said ameen. Sallu ala nabi. An nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there and remember we are here li tu'azziruhu wa tuwakkiruhu وتسبحوا لتؤمنوا بالله ورسوله وتعذروا وتوقروا وتسبحوا بكرته واصيله We are here because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in surah al-Fatih says believe in Allah subhanahu wa believe in Allah believe in his in the teaching of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam وتعذروا وتوقروا and support the teaching of the nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam confirm the lessons that Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given to the ummah and advance his cause. 
ta'zeez and tawkheer for an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is an obligation upon every Muslim. Wa tuwakkiru, venerate and respect and honor the rank of an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's mubarak name, his blessed name is so blessed that when the ayah in Surah Al-Insharah, in Surah Al-Nashrah laka sadrak, when the ayah, when, when the verse, wa rafa'na laka dhikrak was revealed, and wa rafa'na laka dhikrak in the English language would be translated as, we have raised thy mention, O Prophet of Allah. We have exalted your name, O Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that Jibreel alayhi salatu wa salam, he came to me. And he said, O Prophet of Allah, do you know what this verse means? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allahu a'lam. Only Allah knows what the verse means. Subhanallah. Then he said, Qala li Jibreel alayhi salam, Qala Allahu azza wa jal, idha dhukirutu dhukirutu ma'i. Subhanallah. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam, he came to me and he explained this verse. And this verse means, we have exalted thy mention, ya, the, uh, the, thy name, Ya Rasulullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that, Ya Rasul, oh, oh, Prophet of Allah. Ya Rasulullah. And, and remember, Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has never been addressed in Quran by Ya Muhammad. Adam alayhi salatu wa salam, Ya Adam, Ya Nuh, Ya Dawood, Ya Sulaiman. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has never been mentioned. Look at the love of Rabbul Alameen subhanahu wa ta'ala. For an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, never will you find in Quran al Karim the word Ya Muhammad. But it, was, it, is, all, it is always Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, Ya Ayyuhan Muddathir, Ya Ayyuhan Muddammil. Out of the love an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and vice versa. That's why when we look at Islam, look at our religion. Look at all of our practices in our religion. There is no salah without mentioning an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no tashahud without mentioning the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. There is no khutbah of nikah without mentioning Habibullah alayhi salatu wa sallam. There is no khutbah of jinwa without mentioning وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ مَنْ يُحَرِّكُ حَلَقِ الْجَنَّةِ فَيُدْخَلَنِيهَا اللَّهُ تَعَالَى وَمَعِيْ فَقَرَاءَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ There is no act of worship, complete act of ibadah without mentioning an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam name to the extent that our salaf al-salihin, including Imam al-Nawi rahimahullah, including Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiya rahimahullah, they have all said, min adab al-du'a, that among the etiquette of du'a is that we start and we finish our du'a bisthana ala Allahi azza wa jal. By praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and was sara ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa rafa'ana laka dhikrak. Allah has raised thy mention. Subhanallah, forget Saudi Arabia for a second. Forget Pakistan for a second. Forget Lebanon for a second. Forget Syria for a second. In the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom. And in Europe. The most common name for a boy was what? وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ was, was, was Muhammad naming their children, naming their boys after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's why there is a qissa. It's a ma'aruf qissa. It's a very famous narration. A sheikh in Sudan, he had seven boys. Seven boys, mashallah. تَذَوَّجُ الْوَلُودَ الْوَلُودَ So, Another sheikh from, I think it was California, he went to go visit the sheikh in Sudan. And the sheikh, you know, he was sitting with him in his home. And one of his sons came in and he said, this is my son, his name is Muhammad. And a couple of minutes passed by, another son came in. He said, this is my other son, his name is Muhammad. A third son came in, his name is Muhammad. So subhanAllah, after he ate, he wanted to eat first. Before he gets thrown out, after he ate, he said, how do you, how do you uh, keep, when you call Muhammad, seven, seven kids must, you know, as we say in football, right? You know, they must huddle you. So he said, no. He called his kids, he said, Muhammad awwal, Muhammad thani, Muhammad salif, Muhammad, all the way to Muhammad sada. And then he was asked, why did you name all of your sons Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? And he quoted the ayah or the hadith of Kanzul Ummal. 
كان هو من تسمى باسمه يرجو بركته غدت عليه البركه وراحت الى يوم القيامه So much time and so much to say. We have to understand that this love for our Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam and I was given 20 minutes so I have 10 left. <laughs> okay. We have to understand that this love for our Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam all of you and all of us. This is fard al ain. This is an individual obligation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many verses he says in one verse he says kul in kana aba'ukum wa abna'ukum wa ikhwanukum wa azwajukum wa ashiratukum wa amwalun iktaraftumuha wa tijaratun takhshawda kasadaha wa masakin tarawunaha ahabba ilaykum min Allah wa rasuli wa jihad fi sabili fatarabbasu hatta ya'ti Allah bi amri wallahu la yahdi alqawm alfasiqin Allah says that if your mother and father if your sons and daughters if your brothers and sisters if your spouses if the businesses if your businesses if your home that you are pleased with if all of these things are more beloved to you than Allah and his messenger and as Sheikh Jamal mentioned striving in this path of being duaat then fatarabbasu hatta ya'ti Allah bi amri then wait till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala executes his plan Subhanallah we are here in the same manner that Hassan ibn Thabit radiyallahu anhu was in the masjid of an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam there is a beautiful tradition subhanallah in imam ahmad rahimahullah's musnad and imam tirmidhi rahimahullah's sunan when it says wa kana rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yada'u lahu minbaran fil masjid wa huwa yanshadu ash-shaq that rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He dedicated a place for Hassan ibn Thabit radiyallahu an in Masjid Nabawi and Hassan ibn Thabit radiyallahu an he would defend an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunnah and his teachings by words of poetry and one day when and subhanallah among the many poems that Hassan ibn Thabit radiyallahu an mentioned one which really which really elevates our status as an ummah he said with respect to an nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam what did he say he said wa ahsanu minka lam tarqattu ayni wa ajmalu minka lam talid an-nisa khulqta mubarran min kulli ayb ka'annaka qad khulqta kama tasha subhanallah subhan he said he said My eyes have never seen anyone more handsome than you ya Rasulullah. No woman has given birth to anyone more beautiful than you ya Rasulullah. You have khulqta mubarran min kulli aybin. You have been created free from all blemishes and defects. Ka'annaka qad khulqt kama tasha as if you were created in consonance with your own wishes. So whenever Hassan ibn Thabit radiyallahu an whenever he would defend the sunnah whenever he would defend the the the, the six pillars of iman whenever he would defend Islam whenever he would defend an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam one day an-nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam said ya Hassan inna Allah yu'ayyid Hassan bi ruh al-qudus ma yunafi wa rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wasallam subhanallah he said oh Hassan and inshallah we are asking that Allah help us Help us because ala inna nasrullah qareeb he said oh hasan allah has sent you jibril alayhi salatu wassalam to help you defend his nabi allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the rasul sallallahu alayhi wasallam subhanallah i have seven minutes left and i'll finish on time inshallah i will finish on time inshallah qatada ibn nu'man radiyallahu an subhanallah one day he was in a battle with the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and the enemy they were striking arrow upon arrow upon arrow upon arrow trying to kill and assassinate habibullah alayhi salatu wassalam 
They come in the narrations. فَأُصِيبَتْ إِحْدَى عَيْنَيْهِ One of his eyes were injured. An arrow went right into his eyes. فَخَرَجَتْ مِنْ مَكَانِهَا وَتَدَلَّتْ أَلَى خَدِّهِ وَأَرَادَ الْقَوْمْ أَنْ يَقْتَعُوهَا فَقَالْ نَأْتِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم ونستشيره في ذلك. So when, he, when they pulled out the arrow from his eye, his eye was out of its socket hanging on his cheek. And the companions who were around him, they said, let's cut your eye off and let the matter rest. They said, he said, no, let's go to a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and let us ask his consultation. Subhanallah, what did a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam do? A Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took his cuff, his, his palm, and he placed his eye back, back into its socket. And what did a Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam say? Powerful, he said, اللهم إن قتادا قد وقع وجه نبيك بوجهه فاجعلها أحسن عينيه وهدهما نظرا أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام. he said oh oh Allah قتادا ابن نعمان قتادا he saved and protected the face of your prophet with his own face make the eye that was injured better than the eye that was not injured and make his eyesight pure. And perfect. So then, when his son Abdullah, when he went to, when he went to visit Umar bin Abdul Aziz rahimahullah with his waft, with his delegation, his son, Qatada's son, remember, and our brothers who know Arabic, they're going to love this. Because the Arabic language, it's the language of Quran. It's the language of Jannah. As Sheikh Jamal Hamoud mentioned, النبي الأمي العربي. So Umar bin Abdul Aziz رحمه الله said, Who are you? Not Katada, but Katada's son. He said something beautiful in Arabic. He said, أنا ابن الذي سالت على الخد عينه فردت بكف المصطفى أيما ردي فعادت كما كانت لأول أمرها فَيَا حُسْنَ مَا عَيْنٌ وَيَا حُسْنَ مَا رَدِّي SubhanAllah He said, I am the son of the one whose eye was clinging and lingering on his cheek. And I am the son of the one when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took his mubarak hand and he returned his eye back in its normal position. When it was returned in its normal position, it retained, or his eyesight it became better than it was initially before getting injured. Then subhanAllah, he said something great. He said, فَيَا حُسْنَ مَا عَيْنٌ وَيَا حُسْنَ مَا رَدِّي What a beautiful eye. What a beautiful replacement. And how beautiful is the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Our kids, our community, our nation will honor all of us for continuing to have the Khatman Rabuwa Symposium. That when we die, our kid will say, I am the student of Sheikh so and so. And they will also honor us in the same manner that Qatada radiallahu anhu's son honored him, inshaAllah. Last but not least, inshaAllah, there are four minutes left. I've been really, I've been on a, you know, they've been, they told me, Fayaz, we're going to really give it to you. I have to, you know, so I have four minutes left. Remember, we are not here to demonize, to demigrate, to belittle those brothers and sisters. And I'm saying those brothers and sisters who follow the Qadiani tradition. We are not here to do that. Because remember, Adam, kullukum min bani Adam, wa Adam khulika min turab. We are all the children of Adam. Yes. The, the, those who follow the Qadiani tradition, they are not brothers in deen, but they are brothers in clean. They are brothers from humanity. And the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه That none of you can completely believe until you love for your brother what you like for yourself. And remember, Imam al-Nawi رحمه الله, he quoted on this hadith and he said, الأخوة في هذا الحديث, that brotherhood in this hadith is الأخوة الإنسانية, is the brotherhood in humanity and not the brotherhood in Islam. And what do we want for our brothers who follow the Qadiani tradition? We want to save us 
فروما أرسلناك إلا رحمة للعالمين وقد جاءكم رسول من أنفسكم عزيز عليه ما عنتم حريص عليكم بالمؤمنين رؤوف الرحيم my my as Sheikh Tamam mentioned we are du'at the challenge we should leave this room and if we have any relationship with any brothers and sisters from Tien who are Qadiani we should bring them back to the true teachings of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Our mission should be that we are not going to argue with you, we are not going to humiliate you, we are going to educate you, and we want to bring you back to the true teachings of Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That is our mission. Not to belittle, not to de-demonize, not to demigrate. That is our mission because وما أرسلناك إلا رحمة ما للمسلمين للعالمين. Now, Qadiani, there are fundamental differences with us. I'm going to mention two things that, Qad, that, that Mirza Ghulam has said, and I'm going to quote him verbatim in Urdu. Number one, we have to understand that Qadianis consider us kafir. They consider us kafir. The prophets of Allah were sent to, be, to make people Muslim. It seems that according to their tradition, this person was sent to make people kafir. What does he say in Urdu? And I have the, the references here as well. جو شخص ہمارے مخالف ہے وہ یہودی عیسائی مشرق اور جہنمی ہے تبلیغ رسالت ہر ایک شخص جس کو میری دعوت پہنچی ہے اور اس نے مجھے قبول نہیں کیا مسلمان نہیں ہے حقیقت الوحی بلا شبہ ہمارے دشمن بایا بانوں کے خنزیر ہو گئے اور ان کی عورت ہے نعوذ باللہ من ذالک کتیوں سے بر گئی You know what he said? Do you know what he said? He has said there was a lot of difference. He has said, one second. Whosoever is against us, as far as our tradition is concerned, that person is a Jew, a Christian, an idolater, an, an idolater, and hellish. He said, everyone who heard about me is not a Muslim and will go to hell. He said about our Muslim, Muslim women that they are worse than dogs. This is what this person has said and these are the teachings of Mirza Ghulam Qadiani. He said something about Isa alayhi salatu as well. Subhanallah verbatim. He has said, Agar Masih ibn Maryam mere zamane mein hota تو وہ کام جو میں کر سکتا ہوں ہرگز نہ کر سکتا اور جو نشان مجھ سے ظاہر ہو رہے ہیں وہ ہرگز نہ دکھلا سکتا دیکھ حقیقت الوحی دیکھ تو یہ سیز حضرت مسیح کی تین دادیاں اور نانیاں زنا کار قصبی عورتیں تھی جن کے خون سے آپ کا وجود ظہور پذیر ہوا دیکھ زمینہ انجام اور یہ سیز سبحان اللہ ابو عیسیٰ علیہ السلام النبی صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیز I am the closest to Jesus, peace be upon him. He said, You be that you have to say 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 that He said, and I'll end it with this If Jesus, the son of Mary, would have been in our age, then he will be unable to do those things which I can, and he wouldn't be able to show those miracles which are appearing from me. That's what he said about Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. Then subhanallah, he goes a step further. وَأَحْصَنَتْ فَرَجَهَا Maryam. He says, the three paternal and maternal grandmothers of Masih, of Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَارِقُ were prostitutes. And then he says at the end, also keep it in your mind that Jesus, peace be upon him, also had a little habit of lying, نَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَارِقُ قول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات من كل ذنب فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور Thank you Sheikh Fayyaz Without further ado, I'll uh, call upon next uh, speaker, uh, Brother Badiuddin Sorwardi.
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأهل بيته أجمعين Mighty respected brothers and sisters and children, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I'm deeply grateful to Muslim Council of Calgary for holding and organizing this program. This would not have possible, this would not have been made possible if Alhamdulillah, our Sheikh Jamal Hamoud would not have not only just cooperated but also made it possible. Brother Muzaffar, Alhamdulillah. What inspired this program, this particular program, was back in February in Calgary, there was a program in a community center where some members from the Muslim community not only invited the fellow from the Qadiani Mazhab, but they organized a religious program in the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam which bothered lot of hundreds and thousands of Calgarians especially those who are from Pakistan and read Urdu newspapers Mashallah Sheikh Fayyaz wonderful speech I, he said actually why I wanted to say it so you already said that Mashallah very good and Sheikh Jamal also highlighted why we have to be united and Alhamdulillah this Ishtima, this gathering proves that we Muslim, even we have some differences, still can come together and unite on the most basic requirements of our faith. And one of the most basic requirements of our faith is the finality of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. After Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Risala of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the focal and the nucleus of Islamic faith. And there cannot be two differences. There cannot be two opinions. But your brothers and sisters, I'm not sure how much you know what is what goes on in the in, in Calgary based upon the issues and problems that we face. Alhamdulillah, Al Madina Calgary Islamic Center, Islamic Supreme Council of Canada has been working for a long time to create awareness. In the, especially in the Pakistani community that Qadianis, yes they are our brothers and sisters in humanity no doubt they are the same children that we belong to Sayyidina Adam alayhi but there is a basic fundamental difference and we want to make sure that that difference has been recognized and understood by the Muslims of Calvary and especially those who follow the Qadiani tradition they should also know that it's not the issue of spreading hate against anybody. We don't hate anyone. It is against our faith. It is against our religion. It is against the teachings of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But let me tell you just last year, somebody posted a verse from the Holy Quran that Alhamdulillah Imam Jamal out recited. مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٌ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالِكُمْ وَلَاكِ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ وَخَاتِمَ النَّبِيهِينَ This is the verse of the Holy Quran. Somebody posted this verse on the notice board in the McEwen Hall in the University of Calgary with the English translation. Only the verse. There was nothing else. And three days later, the police came to me and said, why did you post this in University of Calgary? This is, have been complained. I said, this is the Holy Quran and there is no explanation. And first of all, I did not post this anyway. I don't go to University of Calgary anymore. I graduated long time ago. So that is the issue that we are facing in this society. That people do not know that the Qadiani tradition is not part of Islam. They are human beings. They are our fellow Canadians. They are our brothers and sisters in humanity. But they are not Muslims. But when you go in the mainstream media, when you talk to the officials, when you talk to the... Uh, politicians, they present themselves as the true Islam, the true followers of Islam. It's not that we want to show that we are the true followers. No. The reason is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Imam Fayyaz said, he is the love of our heart. He is the essence of our iman. He is our focus. 
we follow him from the bottom of our heart in all aspects of our life when you have the best Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is Sayyidul Mursaleen he is Khatam al Nabiyyin he is Imam al Mursaleen when you have the best of all humanity why you want to find somebody else after him Allah Taala says in the Holy Quran and mashallah there are scholars here and I'm sure there are people from the Qadiyani Mazhab here too in the Holy Quran in the tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa in the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa even I would go further even any single sahabi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa even any a family member from the Ahlul Bayt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ever believed that there is someone will be coming after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who should be the part of your faith. None of the Sahaba, none of the Ahlul Bayt, there is no such thing in the Holy Quran that we have to believe in someone after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In the Holy Quran, the conditions of faith are that those who believe what has been revealed before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and what has been revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is nothing after him. When our deen is muk is mukammal, is complete, is final. Al yama akmal tu lakum dino kum atmam tu alaykum niyamati. When the atmam niyama is done, then why there is a room for any other person who can interpret because he is the prophet of God? Now what these people have done, and and especially those people who are not familiar with them, they have post mortem the 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 concept of. Nabuwa. They say, no, he is not the final, he is not the Prophet Mirza Khadiyani. He is the substitute, he is the subordinate, he is under Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He did not bring a new sharia, he follows the sharia of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he is the Prophet too, underneath him. Sometimes they say he is a Zilli Prophet, he is a Tahti Prophet, he is a Buruji Prophet, he is a Siri Prophet, those kind of things. And they have confused our generations because they pray like us, they fast like us, they read Quran, they dress like us, especially the, the people who live in the South Asian communities. And what is most important to know for all of us, they have built a place of worship for them here. It looks like a mosque. And many people do not know, especially from the Middle East and Africa. They do not know that these people are not Muslim. But they just see a, a dome, a minar, and they, it looks like a masjid. They go because they have written Allah's name there too. They have written the verses from the Holy Quran there too. So they see it as a masjid. They go and pray. We cannot pray behind them because they are not Muslim. Their zabiha is not zabiha of Ahlul Kitab either. So people consider, oh, they read Quran, so they are full of Ahlul Kitab, we can eat from. No, we cannot eat. My dear brothers and sisters, it is very important to understand who Qadiani religion is. And this is not Qadiani bashing, this is not Ahmadi bashing. This is absolutely creating awareness, the Aqidah of Islam. If you read the books of Mirza Qadiani, let me tell you how he much hated anyone who did not believe in him. Imam Fayyaz Sahib, he has quoted some of his sayings. In his book, he writes, anyone who does not believe in me, he writes, us par khuda ki lanat ho. He says, on him or her, curse of God, thousand times and then this guy is so a strange person he does not write the word thousand curses on that person he writes thousand times curse 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 lanat 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 he writes on three pages lanat 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 that's the way he hated the muslims on the other side people of qadiyani mazhab they say we hate none we love all that is a very big misguidance that their own prophet has created hate against Muslims, those who do not believe in him. And he says 
that my Allah scars upon those people who do not believe in me and then he writes thousand times the word Lana. My dear brothers and sisters, Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam, he is the final and the last messenger of Allah because of one reason. That Allah ta'ala has completed his deen for the rest of the humanity until the judgment day. When and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, his sunnah, his life, his tradition, his sayings, all preserved. There is nothing lost that somebody has to find and discover. His traditions are safe. We follow his sunnah five times a day. We know how to pray. We know how to behave as a Muslim. In our dealings and in spiritual aspects of our life, we have a life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah Tabari wa ta'ala says, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَا It is no one's life that Allah is asking us to follow. It is the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Allah is asking us to follow. And that has to be followed. Now when somebody comes and says, no, I'm a subordinate and I'm just trying to explain to you because and every time there is a reformer needed. He is not a reformer. He claimed himself to be the prophet of God. Let me wrap up. The biggest problem is with the Qadiani Mazhab that they do not expose themselves in a complete form in one shot. If you believe that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the final prophet, they will show you the readings from Mirza Qadiani that he wrote that I am I'm not claiming to be a prophet. Then in the next pages or following pages, he has written himself that he is the prophet of God. But they won't show you. So you will find a lot of Qadiani friends here that they will say that Mirza Qadiani, is, they don't believe him as a prophet. They believe that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Khatam al nabiyyin But they should also know, especially those who follow the Qadiani Mazhab, okay, you may not believe him as a prophet, but he himself called that I am a prophet. So when somebody calls himself a prophet, our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, after me there will be a 30 Dajjal who will claim to be a prophet. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Kulluhum Qaddaabuna Dajjalun. All of them will be liars and they are the jam. So it does not mean that a, a person does not believe Mirza Qadiani as a prophet but follows the Qadiani tradition. It, what is important that you have to see what he said about himself. That I am the prophet and anybody who does not believe in me is not a Muslim. And he does not consider us as a Muslim. So why we have to go and respect someone who does not respect the faith that we belong and Allah has given us through Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My dear brothers and sisters, with Qadiyani people, we can live in peace and harmony. Absolutely. We are all Canadian. We are law-abiding citizens. We respect every human being, whether the person is a Jewish or Christian or agnostic or, or Qadiyani, regardless. We are all human beings. But we have to create awareness in our society that we cannot present them as a Muslims. Yes, they can do whatever they want to do. And those within the Muslim community, and this is my message of my speech. Those who are Muslim, you may have a political reasons, and I respect that. You may have your social reasons, I respect that. But when it comes to religion, please do not include Qadianis to be representing of Islam. They are not sect. This is also, Mr. oh, this is one of the sect, like we have a Shia, Sunni, and this and this and that. So Qadiani is one of the sect. They are not sect of Islam. Period. They are a different religion. Just like Baha'is is a different religion. They came from Muslim, right? Baha'u'llah was a Muslim guy. His father was a Muslim, Abul Hassan Nuri. Beautiful name. But he became a founder of a separate religion. The Rus. Yes, it's a separate religion. Similarly, Qadianis are a separate religion. Don't call them a sect of Islam. And that is the most important thing that everybody should know. What our secular brothers and sisters in the Muslim community say, you know, these mullahs have divided us. No, no, we are not dividing people. It is the basics and fundamental of Islam. Anybody who do not believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a final prophet is not a Muslim. That is the reason Sayyidina Ababa Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala. 
Why would have fought Musaylma bin Qasab? It's a long story. And I'm sure Imam, those who are coming after me, they will, they will explain to you. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq, when he became caliph, it was not a good time for the Muslim community because Nabi Ali Wasallam was recently passed. He passed away and everybody was shocked. But he wanted to send that army to fight Musaylma bin Qazab who was claiming to be a prophet. And one thing also, Musaylma bin Qazab did not say that I do not believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Musaylma bin Qazab said, I believe Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a prophet, but he is a prophet of Hijaz and I am a prophet of Najd. And he tried to negotiate with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I believe you as a prophet, you believe me as a prophet. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, prophethood is not something I can make up or you can make up. It is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He chooses his part. To my dear brothers and sisters, this is a very sensitive issue and we have to know. No, no religious gathering should invite the Qadianis to be presented. Presented. They can attend programs here and I'm sure there are people here too. But as a speaker, as representing a sect within the Muslim community that is wrong and that should has that should stop and I hope from this wonderful united gathering we will not just an Imam Jamal mashallah this is the first step towards the unity that we were talking about and inshallah with the blessing of this gathering we will have bigger and broader unity within the Muslim community of Calgary and this is the first step towards that inshallah goal and Allah Taala may bless the, the members and especially our uh, chairman for the Muslim Council of Calgary, Brother Ibrahim, that mashallah he made this program possible and Imam Jamal Hamoud and Brother Muzaffar and Brother Nija and, and, and Imam Fayyaz and everybody. I think we came together. And I am also thankful to Al Madina Calgary Islamic Center, their uh, management committee is here, our members of our congregation, they are also here, that they came and participated. Dawat Islami is here, Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless all of you and may Allah unite all of us. In the name of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you, Brother Badiuddin. Uh, I think uh, the people know this uh, difference by now. That what uh, Brother Badiuddin has mentioned, that we got to differentiate what's right and what's wrong. We got to know our aqidah and Sahih Aqidah in the light of Quran and Sunnah. I, I would like to invite all those brothers who do not believe in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as the last and final messenger of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala come to this fold and to this Aqidah and repent and revert to Islam. Correct your Aqidah and be part of those people, be with those people who, who, who will be inshallah Ahlu Jannah and will be with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on the Day of Judgment. Our next speaker is uh, Sheikh Muhammad Tayyib. He has uh, traveled all the way from Saskatchewan to be guest speaker here. He has uh, been organizer of a madrasa in British Columbia before and we have some of the students. Uh, he taught, uh, they are here, part of this. Uh, Brother uh, Said Qureshi was a student of his madrasa and uh, he will be inshallah speaking on the same subject, Khatm al آپ کی تقریر جو ہے وہ اردو میں ہوگی تو اس لیے اردو جانے والوں کے لیے بہت ہی وہ ایفیکٹیو ہوگی انشاءاللہ شیخ طیب السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد لله الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين أوفوا وعهدا الذين هم مفاتيح الرحمة ومصابيح الغرر أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذا خذ الله ميثاق النبيين لما آتيتكم من كتاب وحكمة 
ظیم واجب القدر علماء کرام میرے عزیز بزرگو سننے والی ماں و بہنوں آج کا یہ اجتماع جو ختم نبوت کے نام سے منعقد کیا گیا ہے عقیدے کے لحاظ سے یہ انتہائی اہم ہے اس لیے کہ جتنے بھی آج اللہ کے اس گھر میں بیٹھے ہوئے ہیں سب کا یہ عقیدہ ہے کہ جناب محمد الرسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالی علیہ وسلم اللہ کے آخری نبی اور رسول ہیں آپ تمام حضرات میجورٹی اردو سمجھتے ہیں آپ حضرات جی تو تھوڑا جواب دیں تاکہ پتہ چلے کہ آپ حضرات جو باتیں ہو رہی ہیں اس کو سمجھ رہے ہیں آپ تمام حضرات کا یہ عقیدہ ہے کہ اللہ کے نبی جناب محمد الرسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم اللہ کے آخری نبی اور رسول ہیں اسی عقیدے کے تحت الحمدللہ ہم مسلمان ہیں اور اسی عقیدے پر انشاء اللہ العزیز اپنی تن من دھن کی قربانی دینے کے لیے تیار ہیں تیار ہیں یا نہیں اپنے دل سے بات کریں تیار ہیں آپ حضرات اگر قربانی کا وقت آ جائے کہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی ناموں سے رسالت پر اپنی گردنوں کو کٹوا ڈالو تو تیار ہیں یا نہیں تیار اس کو ایمان کہا جاتا ہے صحابہ کرام رضوان اللہ علیہ مجمعین کو اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے اپنے کلام مجید کے اندر ان کی تعریف کی ان کو کبھی اولائے کا حزب اللہ کا لقب دیا ان کو کبھی اولائے کا ہم المفلحون کا لقب دیا فرما محمد الرسول اللہ والذین معاہو جو نبی کے ساتھی ہیں کیوں؟ اس لیے کہ یہ وہ لوگ تھے جنہوں نے جناب محمد الرسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی یا آپ کی دین کی بات جہاں پر آتی تھی نہ انہوں نے اپنی پرواہ کی نہ انہوں نے اپنے بچوں کی پرواہ کی نہ انہوں نے اپنی بیویوں کی پرواہ کی نہ انہوں نے اپنے مال و متا کی پرواہ کی اپنی تن من دن کی قربانیاں لگا دی اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے ان کو کئی قسم کے ٹائٹل دیئے اور سب سے عظیم ٹائٹل دیا فرمایا رضی اللہ عنہم و رضو عنہو میں ان سے راضی ہوں اور یہ مجھ سے راضی کیوں؟ اس لیے کہ انہوں نے رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی رسالت کے آگے کسی چیز کو آگے نہیں تصور کی اور اگر آج ہم کامیابی چاہتے ہیں اگر آج ہم اسی مشن کو اپنانا چاہتے ہیں کل قیامت کے دن ان کے سامنے سرخرو ہونا چاہتے ہیں تو فَإِنْ آمَنُوا بِمِسْلِ مَا آمَنْتُمْ بِهِ فَقَدْ اِحْتَدَوْا اگر ایمان لانا چاہتے ہو تو ان جیسا ایمان لے کر آ جاؤ فقد احتداؤ تو تم کامیاب ہو جاؤ تو عزیز دوستو رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے فرمایا ہے اس وقت تک تم کامل ایمان والے نہیں ہو سکتے جب تک تم مجھ سے محبت کرو اپنے سے زیادہ اپنے ماں باپ سے زیادہ اپنے اولاد سے زیادہ بلکہ ساری دنیا کی چیزوں سے زیادہ 
جب تک مجھ سے محبت نہیں کرو گے اس وقت تک تم کامل ایمان والے نہیں ہو سکتے اب میں آپ سے سوال کرتا ہوں تقریر الحمدللہ آپ اگر آپ نے سنی ہیں اور ابھی اور بھی سنیں گے اگر ہم نام لیوا ہیں جناب محمد الرسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا اور کوئی بھی آدمی کوئی بھی فرقہ ہمارے آقا جناب محمد الرسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی رسالت پر یا آپ کی نبوت پر حملہ کرے دھاکہ ڈالے کیا خیال ہے ایمانی تقاضا ہے کہ ہم آرام کے ساتھ سوئے رہیں کیا ہمارا ایمان اس وقت تک باقی رہے گا کہ ہم ان کے ساتھ سوشل لائف بھی اسی طریقے سے کریں جس طریقے ہم عام مسلمانوں کے ساتھ کر رہے ہیں جی تو یہ آپ یہ وعدہ کرتے ہیں جس طریقے سے سروردی صاحب نے فرمایا کہ ایک بہت بڑی تعداد اس وقت کلگری کے اندر موجود ہے تو آج ہمیں اور اپنے بچوں کی ایمان کی حفاظت کرنا یہ ہماری رسپانسبلٹی ہے یا نہیں اب اگر کوئی بھی آدمی اپنی بزنس کو اپنی سیاست کو اپنی کسی بھی حالات کے اندر اگر اللہ کے نبی کے دشمنوں کی سپورٹ چاہے گا آپ حضرات اس کے ساتھ سپورٹ کریں گے ایمانداری سے کہیں کریں گے جو نہیں کرتا وہ ہاتھ کھڑا کر دیں اللہ سے وعدہ آپ حضرات کا عزیز دوستو میں نے جو آیت کریمہ آپ کے سامنے تلاوت کی اللہ رب العالمین نے تمام انبیاء کرام سے ایک نساخ لیا وَإِذْ أَخَذَ اللَّهُ مِنْسَاقَ النَّبِيِّينَ ایک وعدہ لیا اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے لَمَا آتَيْتُكُمْ مِنْ كِتَابٍ وَحِكْمَةٍ ثم جاءكم رسول کہ میں نے آپ کو کتاب و حکمت دی ہے لیکن ایک رسول آخر میں آئے گا عربی گریمن کے اندر سمہ کا لفظ وہاں پر استعمال ہوتا ہے کہ جس طریقے سے کہتے ہیں کہ یہ سارے لوگ آئے آخر میں آخر میں فلا آدمی آیا یہ ساری قوم مسجد میں داخل ہوئی آخر میں حافظ شفیق صاحب داخل ہوئے مطلب کیا کہ حافظ شفیق صاحب سب سے آخری آدمی تھے جو مسجد میں داخل ہوئے اب اس کے بعد کوئی داخل نہیں ہوا اللہ رب العالمین فرماتے ہیں میں نے تمام انبیاء کرام سے نساخ لیا کس چیز کا سم جا اکم رسول آخر میں ایک رسول آئے گا اب میں آپ سے پوچھتا ہوں کہ مرزا غلام قادیانی اس کو احمد بھی نہ کہا جائے یہ احمد کی توہین احمدی ہم ہیں عزیز دوستو میں آپ سے ریکوست کرتا ہوں یہ ہماری بری عادت بن چکی ہے کہ ہم ان کو احمدی کہتے ہیں احمدی ہم ہیں الحمدللہ ان کو یا صرف مرزائی کہا جائے یا ان کو صرف قادیانی کہا جائے احمدی کبھی نہ کہا جائے احمد کس کا نام ہے ہمارے پیغمبر صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا نام ہے جس طریقے سے مجھ سے پہلے کسی نے قرآن مجید کی تلاوت کی تھی آیت پڑی تھی حضرت عیسیٰ علیہ السلام بشارت دے رہے ہیں کہ میرے بعد ایک نبی آئے گا من بعد اسمہو احمد جس کا نام کیا ہوگا احمد ہوگا تو احمد کس کا نام ہے ہمارے پیارے محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کا نام احمد ہے لہٰذا جو رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کو ماننے والے ہیں وہ ہیں احمدی جو مرزا غلام قادیانی کو ماننے والے ہیں وہ صرف قادیانی یا مرزائی ہیں وہ احمدی نہیں ہو سکتے یہ ہمیں دھوکہ دیا جاتا ہے عزیز دوست تو اللہ تبارک و تعالی نے تمام انبیاء کرام کو اکٹھا کیا اس میں مرزا غلام قادیانی تھا جب مرزا غلام قادیانی اس میں نہیں تھا اللہ رب العالمین فرماتے ہیں وَإِذَا خَضَ اللَّهُ مِيسَا تَلْ نَبِيِّن سارے انبیاء سے میں نے میساک لیا اس میں مرزا غلام قادیانی نہیں تھا پھر اس کے بعد اللہ فرماتے ہیں سُمَّ جَاكُمْ رَسُول سب سے آخر میں میرا رسول آئے گا اور اس رسول کی جبتی کیا ہوگی کام کیا ہوگا لَتُؤْمِنُنَّ بِهِ 
ولا تن سرنا یہ تو آپ کا کام ہے سم جا اکم رسول لتؤمن النبی ہی ولا تن سرنا مصدق لما معاکم و اذا خذ اللہ میساق النبیین لما آتیتکم من کتاب و حکمہ سم جا اکم رسول یہ رسول جو ناس میں آئے گا مصدق لما معاکم یہ جو کچھ میں نے آپ کو دیا توریت ملی زبور ملی انجیل ملی اس سے پہلے جتنے انبیاء اکرام کو صحائف ملے جو بھی کتب ملی جو بھی شریعہ ملی مصدق لما معاکم یہ اس کی تصدیق کرے گا جو نبی جس نبی کی کتاب جس نبی کی شریعت جس نبی کی نبوت کی جناب محمد الرسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے تصدیق کی ہے وہ ہے نبی اور جس کی تصدیق جناب محمد الرسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم نے نہیں کی اس کو اگر کوئی نبی بولے گا وہ رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پہ بہتان باندھ رہا ہے کہ نہیں باندھ رہا تو کیا خیال ہے اللہ نہ کرے کہ ہم ان لوگوں میں شامل ہو جائیں کہ ہم رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی نبوت یا رسالت پر بہتان باندھیں کہ اس آدمی کو نبی کہہ دیں یا اس آدمی کہ ماننے والوں کو ہم بھی ان کے ساتھ سوشل لائف گزارنا شروع کر دیں کہ جو اللہ کے رسول کی نافرمانی اللہ کے رسول کی تقزیم کرنے والے ہیں اللہ فرماتے ہیں محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے بارے میں کہ مصدق اللی ما معاکم آپ نے اس کی تصدیق کرنی اب یہاں پر یہ کہتا ہے اپنی ایک بڑی لمبی چوڑی سٹوری ہو جائے گی چونکہ یہ پوری اس کی کتاب ہے اس کا نام ہے حقیقت الوحی ابھی جس انداز میں ہمارے فیاض صاحب نے بھی دلائل پیش کیے لکھے ہوئے لائے تھے شاید لوگ یہ کہتے ہیں کہ بھائی یہ تو پتہ نہیں کہاں سے لکھا لے کر آئے ہوں گے یہ اس کی کتاب ہے اس کا نام ہے یہ لکھا ہوئے حقیقت الوحی اس کے اندر اگر آپ پڑھیں گے تو بہت ساری جگہوں میں اس نے قرآن مجید کی آیات اس کے آگے پھر اپنی وحی اور اس کی وحی جو فرشتہ اس کو وحی لے کر آیا کرتا تھا جیسے رسول اللہ اور اس سے پہلے جتنے بھی انبیاء اکرام آئے ان کے اوپر وحی کون لے کر آتا تھا جبریل علیہ السلام اور اس کے فرشتے کا کیا نام تھا ٹیچی ٹیچی وہ ٹیچی ٹیچی یہ کتاب لے کر آیا ہے اس کے اندر اس نے جو خرافات بکواسات کیے ہیں تمام انبیاء اکرام پر خصوصاً حضرت عیسیٰ علیہ السلام پر اس لیے کہ یہ ببخت اپنے آپ کو یسو مسیح کہتا ہے وہ کہتا ہے کہ وہ عیسیٰ علیہ السلام جو بشارت آئی ہے بعد میں آئیں گے وہ اصل میں میں ہی ہوں اس میں وحی کے بارے میں اس نے بہت سارے بکواسات کیے ہیں حضرت ابو حریرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کے بارے میں چونکہ حضرت ابو حریرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ نے عیسیٰ علیہ السلام کی آسمانوں پر اٹھائے جانے کے لیے بہت ساری احادیث اور حضرت ابو حریرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ چونکہ سب سے بڑے راوی ہیں بہت ساری روایات حضرت ابو حریرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ کی بخاری میں مسلم میں ترمیزی میں ابو دعود میں آپ کو ملیں گی تو اس بدبخت کو سب سے زیادہ تکلیف حضرت ابو حریرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سے ہے تو یہ دیکھو یہ لکھ رہا ہے غرض اس مرسیہ سے معلوم ہوتا ہے کہ بعض کم تدبر کرنے والے صحابی کم تدبر کرنے والے صحابی جن کی روایت اچھی نہیں تھی جیسے ابو حریرہ سب کہہ دو لانت ہو اس پر زور سے کہہ دو لانت ہو اس پر جو حضرت ابو حریرہ رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ ہو جو ہماری مذہب ہماری احادیث رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کی باتوں کے سب سے بڑے راوی ہیں ان سے کہتے ہیں کہ کم تدبر والے اور غلط فہمی والے وہ اپنی غلط فہمی سے عیسیٰ محوب کے آنی کی پیشنگوئی پر نظر ڈال کر یہ خیال کرتے تھے کہ حضرت عیسیٰ ہی آ جائیں گے جیسا کہ ابتداء میں ابو حریرہ کو بھی یہی دھوکہ لگا ہوا تھا اور اکثر باتوں میں ابو حریرہ 
बवजह अपनी सादगी और कमी दिरायत के ऐसे धोखों में पड़ जाया करता था चुनाचे एक सहाबी के आग में पड़ने की पेश गोई भी उसको यही धोखे में लगा दी थी उसने यह है हकीकत वही और यह उसी की इबारत है इस तरीके से कई इबारत हैं लेकिन टाइम थोड़ा है मैं किताब इसीलिए लाया था कि यह इधर उधर से लिख पाक कर आपके सामने बोलने वाले नहीं हैं यह इन सबसे बड़ा यानी नबूवत के लिए अगर कितने भी जैसे फयाज साहब ने रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम की सीरत पर जो बातें की हैं ये तो बहुत कम हैं रसूलुल्लाह सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम की सीरत इंसान की बस की बात ही नहीं है इंसान के बस की बात ही नहीं है और अल्लाह तबारक व ताला कभी भी अपने नबी को जिसको भेजते हैं बदसूरत नहीं बनाते उसकी सूरत भी अच्छी होती है और उसकी सीरत भी अच्छी होती है सूरत के लिहाज से तो यह काना था अगर आपकी लाइट एक गाड़ी की रात को जाए सफर करें हाईवे पे एक लाइट उसकी ना हो तो पुलिस आपको हाईवे पे चलने देगी जब एक लाइट वाली गाड़ी को पुलिस हाईवे पे चलने नहीं देती तो यक चिशम को अल्लाह ताला शरीयत के हाईवे पे चलने किस तरीके से इजाजत देगी ये तो इसकी सूरत है और इसकी सीरत अभी मुझसे पहले मेरे ख्याल से सरवर्दी साहब ने बयान किया था कि उसने मेरा रियाज साहब ने बयान किया फयाज साहब ने कि भाई उसने हमारी औरतों को क्या क्या बकवास किए कि अगर जो नहीं मानता मुझे वो लहीन है वो वलद जिना है वो ना मालूम क्या क्या बकवासात उसने की क्या किसी नबी को यह जेबा हो सकता है आम आदमी भी किसी को गाली नहीं दे सकता आम आदमी चीजा एक एक इंसान अपने आप को नबी कहलाए और लानत ऐसे आदमी पर जो इस किस्म के खबीज को माने ये अकल मारी हुई चीज होती है आर्ज यह है कि अल्लाह तबारक व ताला मुझे और आपको अकल नसीब फरमाए समझ नसीब फरमाए ताकि इस फितनों से हम खुद भी बचें और अपनी औलाद को भी हम बचाएं हम ऐसे माहौल और इन्वायरमेंट के अंदर हम रह रहे हैं अजीज दोस्तों हमें अपनी औलाद को ऐसे फितनों से बचाने की इंतहाई जरूरत है वरना ना मालूम और हर एक आदमी आते ये नहीं है कि वो आएगा और कुछ और किताब लेकर आएगा वो भी कुरान हाथ में लेकर आते हैं और ये भी याद रखना कि हर मीनारे वाली मस्जिद नहीं हुआ करती और हर गुम्बत वाली भी मस्जिद नहीं हुआ करती बहुत सारे चर्चों पर आपको गुम्बत नजर आएंगे गुरुद्वारे पर भी आपको गुम्बत नजर आएंगे ये ना हो कि हर गुम्बत देखकर हम अंदर दाखिल होने की कोशिश करें सोच समझ कर हकल से कि क्या ये हमारी इबादत करने की जगह है मस्जिद उसको कहा जाता है जहां अल्लाह को सीधा किया जाता है और जहां अल्लाह के रसूल की नबूत को जुटाया जाए उसको मस्जिद कभी नहीं कहा जाए तो इस वजह से अजीज दोस्तों हमें खुद भी अकल के नाखन लेने हैं और हमें अपनी औलाद को भी समझाना है कि कभी ऐसे फॉल्स प्रॉफिट की इतबा नहीं करें हम जिस तरीके से बार बार ये कह रहे थे हम किसी पर अटैक नहीं कर रहे लेकिन अगर कोई हमारे नबी पर अटैक करेगा तो हम अपने भाइयों को जरूर बताएंगे कि अल्लाह के लिए असली और नकली की पहचान करो असली और नकली की पहचान करो अल्लाह ने अकल दी है ताकि खुदा इस अकल की वजह से हमें सही रास्ते पर चलने की तोफीर नसीब फरमाए और अल्लाह तला मेरे और हमारे बच्चों की ईमान की हिफाजत फरमाए और आखिर उदाबानदुल्ला So, inshallah, um, we'll be um, uh, taking a ten-minute break as long as everyone promises to be back in ten minutes. Uh, um, inshallah, we have uh, three speakers left, um, and the keynote speaker um, is again um, our brother Ahmed Karim Sheikh. Who, Alhamdulillah, he ladi hajana li hada, who was guided by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to come back to the true teachings of Islam, and it's always good to hear insight from a person who lived and and um, in in you know the traditions of Mirza Ghulam Kajani to really understand um, you know how they interpreted certain things in a manner which no scholar of Islam has accepted. 
Um, we, have, we do have refreshments uh, for all of the uh, brothers and sisters. Um, sisters, your refreshment, inshallah, will be delivered to you. Um, because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, um, the best among you are those who are the best to their women. And, and, and we're going to emulate that, inshallah. As far as the brothers, I'm sorry. We're going to have to get our shoes and uh, um, go to the gymnasium. So the time right now is about 4.20. We want to resume um, by, by 4 uh, by 4:40, uh, oh, by 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 4:40, inshallah, and I expect all of us to be back, inshallah. So there's some um, uh, refreshments. Uh, please do enjoy those, inshallah. Jazakallah khairan. We'll resume at 4:40, inshallah. <laughs> Brothers in the gymnasium, please come back. We are going to start in a few minutes, so we want everybody to pay attention to come this program in Shabbat. You can continue eating uh, while you are here, so bring your food with you and in Shabbat. Without spilling, you can have it in Shabbat. Zakalah, I will start in Shabbat very soon. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Our next speaker is from Our next speaker is from Calgary as uh, brother Arvind Chishti. He's Imam at Al Madina Islamic Center. He's educated at Jamia Hanke and Shanko. And uh, he's uh, known as Alamma Arvind Chishti. So he will be speaking in Shara 10 to 15 minutes. His, his speech will be in Urdu, so I apologize for the brothers who do not understand Urdu. And uh, if he could make some main points in English, that would be much appreciated. Allah, what was? Ya Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعد أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين يؤمنون بما أنزل إليك وما أنزل من قبلك وبالآخرة هم يوقنون صدق الله مولانا العظيم قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لو كان بعدي نبي لكان عمر بن الخطاب اللهم صل على محمد النبي الأمي إبالي دنيا أجر دوندي جيساني محمد دنیا اگر ڈونڈے گی سانی محمد سانی تو بڑی چیز ہے سایہ نہ ملے گا ملک کونین میں تاجدار انبیاء ملک کونین میں تاجدار انبیاء تاجداروں کا آقا ہمارا نبی مولا یسلی وسلم دائمن نبدا علی حبیب کا خیر الخلق کل حمین اللہ رب العالمین وحدہو لا شریکی حمد و سنہ امام الانبیاء سید الانبیاء حبیب خدا شاخ روز جزا جناب حضرت محمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کی ذات پاک کے صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم پیش کرنے کے بعد نہائیت ہی واجب الہترام برادرانی سلام آج کا یہ کیلگری کا تریخ ساز اجتماع ختم نبوت کے نام سے موسوم ہے جس عقید پار امت مسلمہ کا ایمان کا دار و مدار ہے قرآن مجید فرقان حمید ہدایت دیتا ہے لیکن کن لوگوں کو اللہ پاک نے ارشاد فرمایا متقی جو پریزگار ہے انہیں قرآن کریم ہدایت دیتا ہے 
ان کی نشانیوں میں سے ایک نشانی یہ ارشاد فرمائی والذین یؤمنون بما انزل الیک وما انزل من قبلک اے پیارے حبیب صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم جو آپ پر اتارا گیا اور جو آپ سے پہلے اتارا گیا نازل کیا گیا جتنی آسمانی کتابیں ہیں صحیفے ہیں اس پر وہ ایمان رکھتے ہیں اللہ رب العالمین نے آپ کو شعور دیا سمجھ دی عقل دی فہم دیا اگر حضور نبی کریم صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم کے بعد کسی قسم کی کوئی نبوت ہوتی تو یقینا رب کا اعلان فرماتا جو آپ کے بعد نازل ہوگا اس پر بھی وہ ایمان رکھتے لیکن نہیں حضور علیہ السلاۃ والسلام پر نبوت کو ختم کر دیا گیا بلکہ عالمی اربا میں دو طرح کے اجتماع ہوئے ایک عوام کا ایک خواص کا جب ساری روح سے اللہ پاک نے اقرار لیا الس تو بے رب کم کیا میں تمہارا رب نہیں ہوں تو قاری محمد طیب صاحب چالیس سال شاخ الحدیث دیو بند مدرسا کے وہ لکھتے ہیں کہ سب سے پہلے جس روح نے کہا کیوں نہیں مولا و نبی پاک حضرت محمد مصطفیٰ کے برے واقع ہیں سب سے پہلے اقرار کیا اور عالمی اربا میں اللہ رب العالمین نے انبیاء کی روا کو جمع کیا اب خاص کا اجتماع ہو گیا ہے اور فرمایا کہ نبیوں میں تمہیں کتاب حکمت دوں گا پھر تمہارے پاس رسول تشریف لائے گا جو تمہاری تصدیق فرمائے گا اگر اس کے بعد بھی کسی نبی کا آنا ہوتا تو سما کے لفظ نہ آتے سما لی تراخی یہ اس بات کا عقیدے کا اظہار ہو گیا عالم روا میں کہ نبی تشریف لائیں گے آپ نے اپنے دور میں ان کا جھنڈا اونچا رہے گا بلند رہے گا اور ان کا دشمن نام رات ہوگا لیکن جب میرے حبیب آ جائیں گے نبوت کا دروازہ بند ہو جائے گا نبوت ختم ہو جائے گی اور یہ نبی پاک علیہ السلاۃ والسلام کو شان دینے والا میرا اللہ بولیے شان دینے والا میرا اللہ کی واسطے تو وہاں چاہیے واضح بولو شان دینے والا میرا دائیں بائیں سب بائیں پتا چلے کہ کیا سنا ہے بولو شان دینے والا میرا اور جن کے شہر کا ذکر آتا ہے عرب کائنات فرماتا ہے لاکس و بحاد البلدی وان تہل بحاد البلدی جن کی بات کی بھی ذکر آتا ہے راہ فرماتا ہے وہ کی نہیں محبوب تیری زبان کی قسم جن کے زمانے کا ذکر آتا ہے راہ فرماتا ہے ول اثر جن کے ہاتھوں کا ذکر آتا ہے اللہ فرماتا ہے ان لذینہ یبا یہ اونا کا جن کی نبوت کا ذکر آتا ہے میرا رفر ماتا ہے ماں کان محمد ابا حد کم ولا کن رسول اللہ و خاتم النبیشین اب لوگ کہتے ہیں کہ خاتم کا معنی ایک ہوتا ہے مور لگانا میں یہ پوچھنا چاہتا ہوں توجہ فرمایا کہ قادیانی بھی تضحیق مراد نہیں ہے مسئلہ سمجھانا مقصود ہے کیا کسی نبی کے مور لگانے سے نبی دوسرا نبی بن جاتا ہے یہ نبوت کون اتا کرتا ہے اللہ پاک نے ارشاد فرمایا اللہ عالم حیض رسالتا اللہ خوب جانتا ہے اس نے اپنی رسالت کو کہاں رکھنا ہے واللہ یقتص بے رحمت ہی میں شاہ اللہ جس کو خاص کر لیتے رحمت کے ساتھ یہ اس کی اپنی مرضی ہے تمامی فسرین کرام نے لکھا ہے کہ رحمت سے مراد نبوت ہے جس طرح کوئی لوئر اپنی سٹیپ کے ساتھ دوسرے کو لوئر نہیں بنا سکتا 
بلکہ پڑھنا پڑتا ہے کوئی مولوی اس طرح مور لگا کے ہر بندے کو نہیں بنا سکتا کورس کرنا پڑتا ہے کوئی آدمی کسی کو ایسے حافظ نہیں بنا سکتا افض کرنا پڑتا ہے اس طرح مور لگانے سے نبی نہیں بنتا بلکہ نبی وہ ہوتا ہے جس کو اللہ تعالیٰ نبوت آپ فرماتا ہے اور یہ مانو ہی غلط بنتا ہے عربی کے زبان عربی زبان میں تو ایک کئی مانو میں مستعمال ہے کئی مانو میں استعمال ہوتا ہے برادران گرامی قدر ہے حضور پاک علیہ السلاۃ والسلام نے ارشاد فرمایا انا خاتم النبی جینا لا نبی یا بادی میں آخری نبی ہوں میرے بعد کوئی نبی نہیں اور سوال یہ پیدا ہوتا ہے کہ سرکار کی امت میں بڑی بڑی شانوں والے بڑے بڑے مقام والے بڑے بڑے رتبے والے کہ جن کے شب و روز اسلام کی تبلیغ کے لیے وقف ہو گئے تھے کیا کسی نے نبوت کا دعویٰ کیا کہ میں نبی ہوں بلکہ خود تاجدار کائنات نے ارشاد فرمایا لو کان بانی نبی چم لکان عمر ابن خطاب لوگوں سن لو اگر میرے پاس کوئی نبی ہوتا کون عمر کہ حضرت ابراہیم علیہ السلام نے اللہ سے اسماعیل علیہ السلام کو مانگا ہے حضرت دعود علیہ السلام نے یا ذکری علیہ السلام نے یحیا کو مانگا ہے دعود علیہ السلمان کو مانگا ہے لیکن میں قربان جاؤں میرے مصطفیٰ نے اللہ سے بیٹی نہیں مانگی بیٹا نہیں مانگا بلکہ عمر کو مانگ کے خدا سے لیا ہے اور سرکار نے فرمایا لوگوں مجھ پر نبوت کا دروازہ بند ہو گیا ہے اگر میرے بعد کوئی نبی ہونا ہوتا تو عمر میں خطاب نبی ہوتا اتنی وضاحتیں جب آ جائیں پھر کسی کو حق کیسے حاصل ہے کہ کوئی نبوت کا دعویٰ کرے بعض لوگ یہ کہتے ہیں کہ حضور کی توجہ سے بھی آدمی نبی بن سکتا ہے اور آپ کی عمر میں توجہ ہے اس میں کوئی شک نہیں آپ کے عظمت اور شان یہ ہے کہ یا یوہن نبی یو انہ ارسلنا کا شاہدہ تاجدار کائنات آپ کی عمر سے بے خبر نہیں ہے کوئی شک ہونے کی بات نہیں لیکن بات یہ ہے کیا حضور پاک علیہ السلات و سلام کی توجہ سے کیا نبی بن جاتا ہے اعتاب سے کیا نبی بن جاتا ہے اگر توجہ سے نبی بن جاتا ہے تو سب سے زیادہ توجہ حضرت سید نابو بکر صدیق رضی اللہ تعالیٰ پر پڑی تھی غار ہے دوسری کوئی ذات نہیں ایک نبی کی ذات ہے ایک اللہ کی ذات ہے اور تاجدار کائنات کی توجہ لے رہے ہیں جب مدینہ طیبہ میں پہنچے تو لوگ ابو بکر کی طرف پڑے کہ یہ نبی ہیں لے کر انہوں نے اپنی چادر سرکار کے سرے نور پہ اڑا دی اور اشارہ دیا نبی یہ ہے میں ان کا غلام ہوں آقا یہ ہے توجہ اطاعت سے اگر نبی بن جاتا کوئی صحابی نبوت کا دعویٰ کرتی کیا نظر آیا ہے عمر نے نبوت کا دعویٰ کیا علی المرتضا نے نبوت کا دعویٰ کیا ابو حرار نے نبوت کا دعویٰ کیا یا امام ابو نفا نے نبوت کا دعویٰ کیا بلکہ وہ ہستیاں جن کی ایک ایک نگاہ سے نبے نبے لاکھ لوگوں نے کلمہ پڑا ہے ان بھی نبوت کا دعویٰ نہیں کیا بلکہ ان کو مسلمان کر کے کلمہ یہی پڑھایا ہے لا الہ الا اللہ محمد الرسول اللہ آخری بات سماعت فرمائے کہ خاتم النبی جین ان نبی جین یہ ہے جمع اور جمع کا جو اطلاق ہے یہ کم از کم تین پہ ہوتا ہے جس طرح کتاب کی جمع کتب ہے مسجد کی جمع مساجد ہے نبی کی جمع انبیاء اور نبی جین ہے تو جمع کم از کم تین پہ اس کا اطلاق کو تین پہ بولی جاتی ہے تو کیا صرف ایک مرزا صاحب کے بعد بکیا کہاں گئے استغفر اللہ العظیم میرے بھائیو اگر کوئی دوست کا دیانی بیٹھے ہیں تو توجہ فرمائیں کہ حضور پاک علیہ السلات و السلام کے بعد نبوت ختم ہو گئی اور یہ اجماعی عقیدہ ہے جس طرح نبی کا ماننا یہ ضروری ہے اگر کوئی نبی ہو نہ مانا جائے تو کفر ہے اور اسی طرح اگر کسی نبی کے ایک نبی نہیں اسے نبی مانا جائے یہ بھی کفر ہے حضور پاک علیہ السلاۃ والسلام کے بعد 
اگر کسی قسم کی کوئی نبوت ہوتی تو میرے آقا اس شان کے ساتھ آئے ہیں رب کائنات نے ارشاد فرمایا لقد جاکم رسول من انفسکم عزیز علیہ ما انتم حریص علیکم بالمومنین رعوف الرحیم وہ رعوف بھی ہیں وہ رحیم بھی ہیں ان کی مشکت میں پڑتا ہے میرے آقا علیہ السلام تڑپ جاتے ہیں سرکار سے برداشت نہیں ہوتا جب سرکار فرمایا ہے ان کی اگر مسواک یہ مشکل نہ ہوتی میں تمہیں آرڈر دیتا کہ ہر وضو کے ساتھ نماز یہ مسواک کرو لیکن حضور پاک امت کے لیے آسانیاں تلاش کرتے ہیں ایک سے آبی پوچھتے ہیں حضور کیا حج ہر سال فرد ہے سرکار فرما کے لیے زندگی میں ایک بار ہر مسئلے میں امت کے آسانی تلاش کرتے ہیں تو اتنا بڑا مسئلہ جس کے نام ماننے سے آدمی جنہی اڑے سرکار چھوڑ کے چلے جاتے ہیں نہیں دین بھی مکمل شریعت بھی مکمل نظام بھی مکمل کہ حضور علیہ السلام پر نبوت ختم ہو چکی ہے دنیا اگر ڈھونڈے گی سانی محمد سانی تو بڑی چیز ہے سایہ نہ ملے گا سارے نبی بڑی شان والے پر تاج دارو کا کہا ہمارا نبی السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ He's a former Qadiani. He was born in a Qadiani family. He lived that life for 50 years and finally he saw the light and got the hadaya from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah guided him to the right path and he came back to the fold of Islam. And he will be talking about his life as Qadiani and what are the inside stories and to introduce him I will invite uh, Hafiz Shafiqur Rahman who had more contact with this brother Hafiz Shafiqur Rahman uh, Brother Naja wants to uh, make uh, one announcement and after that inshallah Hafiz Shafiq will introduce our uh, brother Ahmad Kareem And it'll be held at the Coast Plaza Hotel and also at the Atum Jum'ah Center. We'll probably be using the Al-Medina School and the Abu Bakr Center. And some of the confirmed speakers, and we've confirmed our brother here today to be at the conference. Brother Ahmed Kareem Saif will be with us. Brother Junaid Jamshad will be with us. Brother Bilal Phillips will be with us. Shaykh Muhammad al -Asi. Dr. Hatim al Hajj. Buna Muhammad, George Galloway, Yasser Fasaga, Dr. Samir Matar, Dr. Ezzeddin Abu Laish, and we also have Sister Zarka Nawaz, and we're almost, uh, we almost have uh, Ambassador Shabazz, the daughter of the late Malcolm X. So those are the, some of the confirmed speakers, so we're letting you know in advance that it will be a three-day conference. And we'd like to see everybody there, and we're hoping to have a big event. Salam alaikum. वैसे तो ब्रदर अब्दुल करीम जो किसी इंटरनेट की दुनिया में किसी तारफ के मोहताज नहीं हैं, ये पेदाशी तौर पर احمدی تھے اور یہ قادیان میں پیدا ہوئے اور ان کے والد کا جو درجہ تھا قادیان میں مرزا غرام احمد قادیانی کے ساتھ صحابی کی حیثیت سے تھا یہ جس آپ کو معلومات دے رہا ہوں تاکہ آپ کو ان کی بیک گراؤنڈ کا پتہ چل جائے پھر مزید ڈیٹیل جو ہے نا ان کی اپنی زبان سے سنیں گے تو اس سے آپ کو پتہ چلے گا کہ یہ کیا کہہ رہے ہیں اور جماعت میں جو انہوں نے کام ذمہ داریاں تھیں ان کو 
یہ ناظر عمومی ناظر عمومی اس آدمی کو کہا جاتا ہے جو مخالفین پر بھی نظر رکھے اور اندر والے لوگوں کے اوپر بھی نظر رکھے یہ ان کی یہ حیثیت سی ہے اور جو نظام بھی جماعت کے خلاف کام کرے اس کے سبوتاز اس کو توڑنے کے لیے ان کی ذمہ داری میں تھا اور جماعت کو امپروو کرنے کے لیے جماعت کے کام کو بڑھانے کے لیے یہ ان کی ساری ذمہ داریوں میں آتا تھا مذہب احمدیت کے چوتھے خلیفہ کے ساتھ انہوں نے پرسنل بہت زیادہ کام کیا اور آج سے اور یہ کام جو ہے جب یہ کینیڈا میں آئے یہ کام ان سے یہاں بھی لیا گیا لیکن اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی نے ایک, ایک ان کو اس راستے پہ لے کے آنا تھا اس اس راستے کو چھڑا کے اس اصل راستے پہ لے کے آنا تھا اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی نے ان کو اسلام میں لے کے آنا تھا اللہ نے ان, ان کو اور اسی جب انہوں نے انکار کیا کہ اس کام کو میں نے نہیں کرنا جو مجھ سے وہاں کام لیتے رہے ہو کہ اپنے لوگوں کے خلاف بھی کام لیتے رہے اور دوسرے لوگوں کے خلاف بھی کام لیتے رہے جو ان کو نہیں ان کی جماعت میں نہیں تھے تو جب انہوں نے انکار کیا پھر ان کے اوپر ان کی زندگی کے اندر وہ وہ مشکلات پیدا کی گئیں وہ ان راستوں پہ ان کے سامنے اتنے روڑے اٹکائے گئے ان کی اولاد کو ان سے جدا کر دیا گیا ان کی گھر والی کو ان سے جدا کر دیا گیا اب جس طرح کے حالات یہ پیدا ہوئے پھر انہوں نے اس معاملے کو خیر بات کہا اور اس کلمہ لا الہ الا اللہ محمد رسول اللہ کی چھاؤں میں آ گئے اور مزید یہ تجربات اپنے طور پر انٹرنیٹ کی دنیا میں جتنا ان کا کام ہے آج تک کسی اور ساتھی نے یا کسی جماعت نے آج تک وہ کام نہیں کیا جو انہوں نے انٹرنیٹ کی دنیا میں کمیونیکیشن کی دنیا میں وہ جو کام کیا ہے انہوں نے تو ان کا کارڈ بزنس کارڈ یہ سامنے ہے ان کی ویب سائٹ بھی ہے اور ان کا یوٹیوب چینل بھی ہے آپ ان کو واچ کریں ان کو سنیں اس سے آپ کو بھی فائدہ ہوگا اور آپ جب آپ کو فائدہ ہوگا آپ اپنی نئی نسل کو وہ بات ڈلیور کر سکیں گے تو میں دعوت دیتا ہوں برادر عبد الکریم کو کہ وہ آئیں اور اپنے خیالات کا اظہار فرمائیں اللہ ریسپیکٹڈ listeners, brothers and sisters, and my elders, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. First of all, I thank you, MCC, that they invited me here, and they let me have the opportunity to speak with you. And I will share with you that how I spent the 50 years, half a century of my life in Ahmadiyya cult or Ahmadiyya religion. When I was a member of Ahmadiyya cult or Ahmadiyya religion, according my understanding that I was following the real Islam. During my this address, you might feel that some information what I'm talking is not acceptable for you. But those are the facts. And to just please someone, <clears throat> I cannot lie. I have to give you the facts. So you should know that what are the uh, real facts are. <clears throat> I was feeling more comfortable speaking in my own language, which is Urdu, but my brothers who do not understand Urdu language, for them, I am trying to speak in English, so please forgive me if I will make mistake. <clears throat> As 
my brother, respected Shafiq Saab, told about me the basic thing that uh, I was born Ahmadi, and I was born in that town from where this Ahmadiyya cult started, named Qadian, and from there it says the Qadiani. So you can call me the real Qadiani because I was born there. <laughs> My father has speaks up said that in Ahmadiyya religion they call those people who have seen Mirza Ghulam Ahmed as a companion equal to Mazala just like the companions of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They gave the real name that's Sahabai Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, Sahabai Masih Ahmed. And even furthermore, if they will go, they have created 313 Sahabas. And you can find these 313 companions of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed in their website or from their literature. You can find all that. Now, my father born in 1900, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed died in 1908. And they made the criteria that uh, who was at the age of 11 when Mirza Ghulam Ahmed died, he will be considered Sahabi, so my father is not coming into that category. But, but my family have a very high rating in Ahmadiyya religion. The majority of my family members, they are the, they call Amir, the one who is the in charge of the one cities, like uh, I believe most of the people, they are aware of that one, that Amir, who is holding the top uh, position. And after that, this is called on the city basis. If you go on the town basis, where are less population, they call president, they call Salar. In my family, there are few Amirs, couple of presidents. I have uh, uh, many of my young family members who are like a missionary in charge are the preachers. One must be here in Calgary. Are everywhere where you see that they call the missionary in charge. Further, if you see on the political like a system, the ministry is called the minister, minister of this department, minister of this department, but in this they call a Nazareth. They give a Nazareth name and who is the head of that Nazareth is called Nazar. Presently you can say that the financial ministry is holding my nephew who is the right hand of the present Khalifa of Ahmadiyya village. So this is the little bit background I just want to give you that uh, my family is not like that one that we don't know about this religion or we have not the reach up to that extent where you could find that what is going on inside. I personally have worked with the fourth successor, which they call the fourth Khalifa Mirza Tahar Ahmed. Even before when he was not a Khalifa, we worked a lot and I worked with him in the time of Bhutto and his election time 1970s. Knowing and having all these kind of positions and informations never came to my mind that am I on the right path? Am I believing a false prophet? No, never. Today, if any MD is sitting over here, he honestly believes 
that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is the true prophet. And he believes that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is the second advent mazala of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He believes that. Now how come? Because they've been brainwashed. 97%, 97%, mark my words, 97% Ahmadis have not read the book of Mirza Ghulam. They have hear and say knowledge. Whatever they've been told, what they listen, they believe. And they have a belief that whatever our Khalifa is saying, whatever our Amir is saying, is not lying, he is telling the truth. So they believe. Now, if you ask them anything, they will say, yes, we are ready to talk, but let's we talk first of all. Is Hazrat Isa alive or dead? That's their trap. That's the way they've been trained. Hold on a second. We will talk about later about Hazrat Isa. Let's we talk to whom you believe. What about me? No, 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 no. You cannot talk about Mirza Saab. Why we cannot talk? Oh, because first of all, we have to decide whether Hazrat Isa is alive or not. Come on. We are talking about the new prophet. Why not we should talk about him? Why not we should talk about his life? Believe me, you go and ask them, they will never talk. I have here one thing in my hand. This is the juice of 83 books of Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Qadiyah. The contradictions. Now, this one I made for the Ahmadis, that for God's sake, you will never be told by your Khalifa that read Mirza Saab's book, but I request you please read this one. I made it easy for you. Instead of 83, I made a just a one. Just go through with this. You will find yourself. As before that, the, my learned scholars and ulama have given you very quotations that where Mirza Saab says yes and no, yes and no. I'll just give you one or two. In Urdu, I'm quoting uh, his words. We curse on the claimant of prophethood. Whoever claims that I'm a prophet, we curse. Hamara <laughs> dawa hai. Ke or Nabi hai. First of all, whoever will claim that I am a prophet, we curse him. On the other end, I claim that I am a pegamber, I am a Rasul, I am a Nabi, I am a prophet. Now, all are in this one, with the reference, the names of the books, with the pages and everything. And I believe, uh, I don't think uh, I have too much uh, right now, but a few books I gave to Brother Shafiq. If you want to consult that one, you, any of you can take from him and watch it. Now, let's we come to the point back over there. Right now, the Ahmadiyya religion is changing, is introducing the new identity of Islam. Now, this is an alarming situation, and you must know what happens sometimes when we feel a little bit haddock or we feel that our tummy hurts, we say, never mind, oh, maybe I have taken something wrong or I have done a little bit job. We don't care about, we don't think about that. 
down the road after two days, no, I cannot sleep now. It's too much. Okay, I'll go to the doctor, I'll see, I'll take the Tylenol and do this and that. No, nothing is happening. After a month, okay, I made an appointment, went to the doctor, doctor made a certain test and all these things, finally he said, well, you have a tumor over there. And if you would come just a little bit before to me, maybe I could do something, but no, it is. This is the same thing they are today, changing the identity of Islam. It calls the identity theft. They call Ahmadiyyat is the true Islam. Now my just question to you people, do you have true Islam? Do you ever doubt it that whether you have a false Islam? But they claim you are not a Muslim. You don't have the real Islam. We are the one who possess the real Islam. Now, North America particularly, in Europe and in North America, North America is buying whatever they are saying. Mark my words, believe me, this is not that I got a revelation like him. No, to be honest with you, this is my vision. I'm saying from me, I'll be wrong if it will not be proven, nothing else. Mark my words, down the road, when your children will go for any kind of government services or any kind of position, and you will write down that we are the Muslims, believe me. In the interview, you will be asked, which, what Muslim, what kind of Muslim are you? Sunni? Sunni? Shia? No, Ahmadi. Oh, okay. No need to check the background. Let him go. Now, you should think, it's not like this one that we have to attack on them. It's not like that one that we should hate them. No. It's not like we should discriminate them. No. We have to do our part to prove to the government that look, as before, that it is mentioned over one of our respected speaker, that all the Muslims have to come under one umbrella. Doesn't matter what you believe. Among you, you have a little bit differences. It's okay, but you are a Muslim. You, in, you believe in one Allah, you believe in, in one Rasul, you believe in one Quran. After that period, nothing. Jew believes in Moses. When he believes in Sayyidina Isa, he becomes a Christian. When Christian believes in Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he becomes a Muslim. Now, if you will believe after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam someone else, would you be remain a Muslim? Simple. I mean, we don't need to tell them, look, this and that, blah, blah. No, simple thing. There is a new. I know, they twist the words. They will say, oh no, when he claimed that I'm this and that, it's a metaphorical. Look, we are not living in a dream world. We are not talking metaphorically. We are talking about the reality and the fact. When tomorrow I'll face the Almighty Allah, my mother, my father, and my ex-Prophet Mirza Ghulam is not going to stand beside me and he's going to take, okay, I'll save you. No, I have to face. You have to face. Now what else is happening? You have a young children, your sons and daughters, colleges, university students. Let me know if there is time to, okay, thank you. Your sons and daughters, they are going to the universities and colleges and of course, 
they have the colleagues, they have the students, they have the friends who are Jews, who are the Sikh, they are Christians, they are Ahmadis. Now particularly when Ahmadis they target, they say, look, what kind of Muslims are you guys? What your parents are doing? And our children, what, what, what happened? They discriminate us, they kill us in Pakistan, they do this to us, they say we are not Muslims. Why you guys do this? No, your children don't know anything. They come to you guys. They ask, Daddy, Mommy, I've been asked one of my Ahmadi friend that why we discriminate them? Why? They have the same Quran. They offer the same prayer. They, the way we keep fast, they do the same way. And they have the same names. The mother and father, they are thinking, now what should we say? And they listen from here, from there, oh, Ahmadis are bad, no, they are not Muslims. They simply convey this message. My dear brothers, for God's sake, this is not right. This is not enough. Children's might will not ask you. Might be they will keep their mouth shut, but they are not satisfied. And they cannot satisfy them. You have to know, you have to learn, you have to satisfy them. And you have to give them a logical answer to their questions. I can give you a very a simple example. And I hope you are all intelligent, you will understand. If we are driving <clears throat> and we see there is a time of the prayer and you see on the side of the road couple of two, three people, they are offering the prayer. You will just stop your car, you will rush to them and you will be standing behind them and you will offer your prayer. Honest to God, these are my words. Ahmadis should make me wrong. This is my challenge. Ahmadis will never stop their car. They will never offer their prayer. They claim they are Muslims. This is the time of the prayer. Why don't you stop the car and why don't you offer the prayer? Because those people who are offering the prayers, they are not Ahmadis. Muslim will never ask, are you a Diobandi? Who is offering the prayer? Are you a Brailvi? Are you a Sunni or Mahal? No, they know that this act that only Muslim does. Ahmadis will never offer the prayers behind any Muslim. How we can say that they are our brothers? How we can say they are among us? We recognize their existence and they have all the right as I have the right to express my views here. They have with the same right that they can express their views, whatever they have. But they have no right to twist my faith. They have no right to misinterpret my faith my teachings. The person who did not understand, the person who is making a claim that I'm the prophet, I'm the founder of this religion, and he has that Allah has given me the knowledge of Quran and Hadith, and he believes that Sayyidina Isa is alive and will descend again. After that, he changes his mind and says, Oh, Allah have told me that, O oh, Ghulam Ahmed, you are strong. No, let me tell you, Hadrat Isa is dead, he will, he will not come, and you are the Isa. Is it possible? The person who claims that Allah has given me the knowledge of Quran, was Allah Mazallah first wrong or later he became wrong. Or there is something wrong with this person who is making all this. 
If you ask the MDs, they will simply say, listen, first Allah did not tell, after that Allah told, so he declared this. That's it. It's not a game plan. It's not a joke. It's a serious matter. If somebody says today that I have this knowledge, the next moment the person can say, okay, answer my this question, okay, do this one, solve this problem. I have this one. Right away we can judge the person whether he knows whatever he is making claim or not. You will be surprised if you study, <clears throat> but of course most of you have no time to study. That's why this one is made and this is available on the internet as well. I mean like uh, who cannot mm, get this copy, they can go on the internet. My card is over here. There you will have a load of information about everything. You can find my 600 videos about this one. But of course when you will see my videos, beside you will see the videos. The most peaceful, the most loving and caring community which has the name Ahmadiyya community. Very loving and caring, very peaceful community. They love for all, they hate it for none. They have made my videos and poses me as a terrorist. Because I'm not angry with them. I did not abuse. I did not insult them. I always called Mirza Saab and I res respectfully I call them. But what I got, I'm a terrorist. They abused my mother. They abused my father. According to them, they are not abusing my mother. <laughs> they are abusing their own Amadi lady. She, she is the follower of Mirza Saab. They are not abusing my father. They are abusing their own. But they are the one who have so much hate. If you guys will go on the internet, you will find. Very simple. Uh, I think uh, let's we let's we have a questions a little later. And uh, there is the paper. Please write down on that one instead of this way. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> now, how there are the few questions, there are the few things that uh, as Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Saab have made the claim that he is the Mahdi and he is a Isa ibn Maryam. Might be it will be a little bit surprising for you when I said that he made a claim that I am uh, Isa ibn Maryam. Literally he said that I am Isa ibn Maryam. Further, Mirza Sahib said that if Quran has not given me the name Isa ibn Maryam, I am a liar. If Quran, let me give you the Urdu wordings of that one. Agar Quran ne mera naam Isa ibn Maryam nahi rakha to main jhuta hu. Now, we can interpret anything metaphorically and this and that. Mirza Sahib is claiming, Mirza Sahib is saying, Mirza Sahib is writing a simple plain word. To understand those words, we should not be a rocket scientist. Quran ne agar mera naam Isa ibn Maryam nahi rakha to main jhuta hu. Now can anyone show me that Quran in which it is said that Mirza Ghulam Ahmed is Isa ibn Maryam? Have anybody ever seen this? Read this? Now if we are going to interpret something like look at this one, this means like this and that. In, this, in the Quran Allah says Jin ke dilo mein kajji hoti hai, wo mutisha be haar ke piche jate Like the people who have something wrong in their hearts and minds, they go against the, they, they follow the metaphoricals. 
they don't take the straight things they always take the zigzag way now as he made the claim that he's a mahdi and he is the messiah the concept my learned ulama and most respected ulama is sitting over here and even among you who know the quran and hadith very well i did not directly please watch my words i did not directly in straight away any commandment of quran where quran says the mahdi will come i did not see in quran i did not see in quran any revelation that hadrat isa will descend from sky but i found these two in the sayings of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam now the question is this one the mirza ulama had made a claim based on the sayings of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam fine great okay you made the claim now let's see okay, when mahdi will come when isa will come what he will do, what they will do have you done that if you have done i will accept you and if you have not done i'm sorry man you came you died you gone and still we are in trouble <clears throat> i mean it's a common sense it's a common sense and this is my message to my ahmadi friends believe me i know even in this gathering a couple of ahmadis are sitting and they are just doing their duty of this one okay we have to make a report we going to tell them that ak sheikh said this thing this thing or he said this one some people are making the video some are recording this and that everything is the work is job is they are keep on doing the job but for god sake leave this job aside take me to there i'll go with you guys there but listen to me what i'm saying use your common sense use your brain just think about that one that mirza saab has taken this concept this is a non quranic concept that the mahdi will come this is the non quranic concept that the isa will descend from the sky this is from the sayings of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam for god's sake the same way is over there that what are their duties what are their jobs when they will come why don't you look at that one i'm not saying okay you telling wrong what i'm trying to say just see the site next page and think what are they due why they have to come if somebody comes obviously he is coming for something did he do the job no he came today even today they are still trying to prove that the mirza saab was the true messiah of a god said he came and he is gone and you still proving that is not proved yet now same time i will just remind you people are we going to wait that when messiah will come he is the one who is going to solve our problem or should we do something like for example if uh, messiah does not come in my lifetime it happened to my father it happened to our forefathers they died before and there was no messiah like if the messiah had to come 100 years later are we going to sit like this one okay no i'm not going to do anything my humble request that we have to look ourselves that we have to do our job we should meanwhile become as a mahdi and messiah we are should be like that to follow that path and if we will be only waiting for that one we will lose our generations and the loss we cannot afford for that we have to understand the real teachings of islam we have to follow the quran we have to follow the sunnah of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam 
we have to be honest with us believe me we love our children we have to show them otherwise i'm sorry you might not like my words if tomorrow my daughter comes and says daddy i have a boyfriend can you tell me what i can do <laughs> nothing she has all the right to say she is living in this country she is young now i am the one who pushed her there it's very hard to believe this one believe me it's very hard to accept this reality but please for god's sake you must think about this one talk to your children don't leave them alone do not tell them that okay don't ask me no when they come just make them to ask you the questions and if you don't know what they are asking come to your learned scholars ask them bring your children here we should not spend our energies we should not spend our all the force to discriminate someone to think the negative always no we should care about our next generation this is our responsibility now there are many things many points which has been clear and which have been told by the learned scholars on my karam and i was going to share with you people as i said that when i was amidi i never thought that i'm wrong and the same thing today the amidis are thinking not they are not wrong because they don't think about this way so instead of that we should say bad to them or this we should have a sympathy with them we should have a such attitude towards them that look if you been misled if you been misguided please based on the humanity based on this one that we are the same brother and sisters on humanity i want you to let's we discuss let's we talk come on the right path but if we will buy cards so it's very easy we can buy card so if you will say no i'm not going to talk to you it's very easy but are we doing the right job whereas allah has given the duty to the ummah of prophet this is your job to give the dawa and in that one all the amadis non muslim sikh hindu jews christian everybody is in they can hate us we cannot hate them no way this is against the teaching of islam there was uh, one thing been said about the sect and all that one i think uh, my most respected speaker sir worthy sahab said about the sect and all that just i want to make one thing uh, add into that one not to like uh, there is nothing you said wrong but just want to add one thing yes of course there are many sects but sect never had a prophet so it's hard for me to call amdia as a sect because sect never had it you tell me there are so many sects did any sect have a prophet is the unique one so must be that this is not a sect this is a religion and for them our message is to them that look our arms are open our hearts are open we love you guys we want you to come from where you've been misled if you think you are right look the best way instead of talking individually you have your channels invite us or 
we invite you come to our platform we give you all the assurance of your security and everything and all the respect let's we talk let's we create the bridge let's we open the dialogue because islam is the deen of allah there is no doubt there is impossible the book which starts with the la rab zalik al kitabu la rab we cannot even doubt on that one but unfortunately the revolutions on mirza saab <clears> tai <throat> ai do you understand the tai ai means arti came this is the revolution allah is sending that tar ai the telegram came do us tarah two razors two razors this is the revolution i can go on khaks are peppermint i cannot translate this khaks are peppermint i cannot translate i'm sorry this is uh, honestly speaking i have no um, to make a fun of him no just i want to give you the a little bit example of that one that uh, words of allah revolution so not like this we should look at the quran so we invite to the amadis that look we love you we don't hate you there is no way if i have to give a name about the hate if i have to call a founder of hatred if i have to call someone founder of the hatred to be honest with you i'm not saying from myself i'm saying the words of mirza saab mirza saab himself saying that he is the founder of hatred nafrat ka bani the person who hates i give you a quotation from his own words hazrat time ho jaye mujhe bata dijiyega mujhe zyada hai fikr hai ki main aapka time please if there is time just let me know पाइन ओके जी ट्राई माइंड ऑफ इन दैट मैं ईसाइयों के फर्स्ट आई रीड दैट उर्दू देन आई ट्राई माय बैड इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन मैं ईसाइयों के खुद साख्ता खुदा की निस्बत तमाम मुसलमानों से ज्यादा कराहत और नफरत रखता हूं मीनिंग इज दैट के जो आ, मतलब ईसाइयों के खुद साख्ता खुदा यानी आप i don't think uh, uh, the uh, jesus which the christians call jesus and we call sayyidna isa are the two different uh, personalities i believe is the one and i'm sure he says ke bhai main muslimano ki nisbat musliman they do hate but main zyada rakhta hu yahan tak ke agar kul muslimano ki nafrat isaiyon ke khuda ki nisbat tarazu ke ek palla mein rakh di jaye if you put on my hatred on the one uh, scale of uh, on the one side of the scale aur meri nafrat ek taraf to mera palla sab mera palla sab just change the papers a little bit there. okay meri nafrat ek taraf to mera palla isse bhari hoga meaning is that one that i hate with the jesus to whom the christian have called god like the christian have made him god he did not claim that he is a god but the christian made him god my hate and the 
all the Muslims hate. First of all, the Muslims they don't hate either is a Jesus or Hadrat Isa alayhi salam. No way. Muslims they cannot imagine, they cannot think about Hadrat Isa that they could hate Hadrat Isa. No way. But even to the Jesus, Muslims they don't hate. He says all the Muslims, but they hate with the Jesus, and my hate is on the one side. Even my side is heavier than all the Muslims. This much I hate. So who is the founder of the hatred? So who is hating that? About the Christianity. Now, this is uh, for sure. I will ask my learned ulama that I can provide them from the original books, the quotations that what are the thinking. What is the concept? How they take the Christianity and the Christians? The Mirza Ghulam Ahmed Sahib said about the Christianity and the Christians. Believe me, if you just translate in English and provide to these people, they will see the real face of love for all, hatred for none. My humble request to the Ahmadis. If they are sitting in our gathering, first of all, I'm really thankful that they came and they listened to me. Whatever their intention is or was, I will request them that try to read Mirza Saab's book. Try to understand the real thing. If you have any question, please come forward. Talk to us academically. Taking enmity out of your heart, just come up to understand the things. If you have any questions, I'll happily take. Jazakumullah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, to the MCC and all my brothers on the head table and who have organized this one. Muzaffar Saab speaks up. If I miss any name, please forgive me for that one. I'm thankful all of you. Slava alaikum. We'll, uh... We'll have questions uh, after the prayer. Okay. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Thank you, brother uh, Ahmed Bates, uh, for the inside story. I think uh, we got the message. Uh, now is the time for us to prayer. And uh, before we pray for Asr, uh, we'll try to finish up all the speeches. And after uh, Asr, we'll come back and uh, we'll have a concluding speech by our Shah Samar And we'll take all the questions. Uh, if anybody has any questions, any, anything to say about our comments, we have some uh, paper here and pen. Uh, raise your hand and somebody will get to you and uh, give you a paper. So give your questions now. We'll inshallah try to answer all the questions after the Asr prayer. If you have wudu, mashallah, it's good. If you don't, please proceed for wudu. And inshallah, in 10 minutes, we'll be starting the Sarah, inshallah. And our last speaker is our local speaker, is uh, Brother Arab Hussain Jilani. He'll speak for 5 to 10 minutes and give his thought on Khatman uh, Uwa. Brother Arab Jilani, he has very much uh, restraint on time. So, inshallah, we'll make a dan after 10 minutes. And in the meantime, the people who have to make wudu, please proceed for wudu, inshallah. Brother Adar Sanjilan. الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين خصوصا أفضلهم محمد المصطفى صادق الأمين وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين وعلى أصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فعود بالله السميع العليم 
من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ما كان محمد أبا أحد من رجالكم ولكن رسول الله وخاتم النبيين آمنت بالله صدق الله مولانا العظيم وبلغنا رسوله النبي الكريم العمين ونحن على ذلك لمن الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين ما يمدحت محمدا بمكالتي لكن مدحت مكالتي بمحمد هزار بار بشويم تهن بمشكو غلاب حنوز نامي تو گفتن کمال بے عدبی اور میں چپ رہوں یا رسول اللہ میں چپ رہوں تو تو ہی سب کچھ ہے جو کچھ کہا تو تیرا حسن ہو گیا محدود قال اللہ تعالیٰ عز و جل جلالہ فی شان حبیبی صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وآلہ وآلہ وسلم مخبر معامرہ ان اللہ و ملائکتہ یسلون علی النبی یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا صلو علیہ وسلم تسلیما اللہم صلی وسلم مبارک اللہ سیدنا نبینا شبیرنا مولانا محمد وآلہ علیہ وسلم نہایت ہی واجب الاحترام رسپیکٹڈ شیخونا و شیخ القلگری بلا شک شیخ جمال جمال حمود نبر اللہ علمہ و قلبہ و بیانہ و لسانہ اور دیگر ہمارے بھائیو I will not take time. There is so much being said that I don't think there is enough or anything left, but I'll add to whatever I can in this five, seven minutes, insha'Allah. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallama when he declared his nubuva and his risala that the first thing that he asked Mushrakeen Makkah that I have lived 40 years among you how would you find me if I say there are somebody to attack behind these mountains would you believe me and they said you are Sadiq and Amin. The Mushrikeen in Mecca believed that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa ala alihi wa sallama was Sadiq and Amin and he is Sadiq and Amin. Siddiq is from him. Siddiq is from him. He is Sadiq. Siddiq un se hai. Aman un se hai. Amanat un me hai. Aman un se hai. پوری دنیا میں حضور صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم میں آپ سے کوئیسٹن کروں گا اور یہ بات ایسے ہی انشاءاللہ سپیچ جو ہے کوئیسٹن میں ختم ہو جائے گی جس طرح سے حضور صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم نے مشرقین مکہ سے پوچھا دبے رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم آسک مشرقین مکہ that am I صادق I'll ask this question today and to the everyone that do we believe really 
the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa ala alihi wa sallama is sadiq and amin. Is there any doubt? If anybody has a doubt, raise your hand. We do not believe that Prophet has anything in him but sid. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alihi wa alihi wa sallam, like it's being said about uh, about I, I will also answer the previous speeches like something is not being said in Quran but is said in Hadith what is said in Hadith is also equivalent as Quran because Quran is telling us whatsoever Quran is Rasulullah is giving you take it Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking. So hadith becomes, because hadith is also part of Rasulullah. Quran is also part of Rasulullah. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa said, this is Quran, and we believe that is Quran. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, this is hadith, and we believe this is hadith. And sunnah, everything. So if it's not in Quran, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa has said it. وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولُ فَخَذُوا We have to take it. And that is as Qur'an. Because وَمَا يَنْتِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيُ يُوْهَا He was a Rasool. He never ever speaks out of his own. But he speaks the only way. That is why to him. So that tells us what the Rasulullah says. This is Qur'an. We have to take it. What's hadith? We have to take it. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said to Hadrat Ali karram Allah wa jhul kareem Farmaya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Ya Ali wa anta minni bi manzlati Harun min Musa ala inna la nabuwata ba'di Ay Ali you are to me as Harun was to Musa, but there is no Nabuv after me. And Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam emphasized the kalima tanbiha ala khabardar. Shak na karna, doubt na karna, ala khabardar. La nabi ya baad. Mere baad koi nabuvat nahi. To hame iske baad علماء نے اپنا کام ختم کر دیا انہوں نے عالمی علمی دلیلیں دے دی اس کے بعد کوئی دلیل رہ سکتی ہے is there any other reason left when رسول اللہ صلی اللہ تعالیٰ علیہ وآلہ علیہ وسلم said that there is no Nabi after me I have no stomach for that if somebody will come and ask and debate with me the man I ask Nabi لا نبی عبادی یا خاتم النبی جین رسول اللہ said interpreted the ترجمہ of خاتم النبی جین لا نبی عبادی and we have no stomach to take any other translation if somebody is there doing so up to him our I'll take inshallah a couple more minutes our grand sheikh ساجدار گورا پیر سیدنا مہر علی مائی گریٹ گرینڈ شیخ گولرا شریف سیدنا مہر علی ہی واز آلسو چیلنجڈ بائی مرزا تو رائٹ تفسیر آف قرآن دیت ویل وی دے دا قرآ اور ویل تی اوپن دا پیج اور فورٹی پیج ہاست تو بی ریٹن بات اللہ سبحانہ و تعالی gives the vision to his beloved ones wo kya hai hadith sharif hai ittaku firasat al mu'min innahu yanzir bi nurillah to hazrat peer sayyidna mihr ali shah rahmatullah ta'ala alai said yes i accept that whatever your conditions are but there is one more condition that why don't we talk before that And what is that? How we will talk that? And how we will write that? 
The, our Sheikh said, we will put the column, we will put the paper, we'll open the book, and then I will order the commandment, give commandment to the pen, that Bismillah rise and write. If my column rises and write, then you accept Tawbah and follow me. And Qadiani, he ran away. He did not come to that. 24th of August 1942, that was then in Lahore and Punjab. And throughout India, ulama Osijada Nishinin, all were gathered there. And same thing happened here. Inshallah, I never ever would claim that something like that. But Mubahla was brought to me. Mubahla was brought to me at international airport. And Alhamdulillah, I did Mubahla at the Salat al Asr, witnessing three, four people right at the airport, international airport here in Calgary. And that person, for one year he was here. His name was Mirza Rafiq. If people know him, he was here, but he have not seen after one year or so. And there was another person who started following me that he want to do. He want to discuss with me. And then he also, we came to the conclusion that I don't want to go, you know, finding the tarjima of this and tarjima. Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam said so and bas, nothing else. He said, no, Nabi Abadi, la Nabi Abadi, Masih and Mold, and inshallah, I'll, I'll finish this one here. And he, he said, I am going to Vancouver, I'll come back, and I will do Mubala. I said, no, do this Mubala right now. You might not be able to come back. And he never came back. He had accident between Golden and, and Vancouver, and died right there. You don't know that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Azza wa Jalla Jalaluhu has sent his Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Sallam with the absolute saying if there is anything said by Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Sallam that is it there is no question there is no tarjima there is no tafsil there is no ta'wil there is nothing Kalima Rasulullah Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wa Sallam Haq Aap sab maante hai do you believe? You don't believe that? Do we believe that? Yeah, no. Yes, we believe. Barakallahu feekum jazakumullah khair. Yeah, inshallah. Sure. Uh, thank you, Brother Arba. I think uh, the word of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last word. So, uh, what he said. If we believe truly huh? in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is no doubt left One other session anywhere in any literature that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last and the final messenger. And this is our message to all the humanity, to our brothers in Islam, and to those who are not in the fold of Islam. And we invite them to come to the fold of Islam and see the light of truth. Uh, now we'll have a line for uh, Salat al-Asr, we'll have Salat al-Asr after that, and inshallah we'll gather again after that to answer the questions that have been uh, delivered here to the front table, and inshallah after that we'll conclude the event. So stay for those questions, it must be very interesting questions. Most of these questions are to uh, Brother Ahmad Karim. And I'm inviting Brother Ahmad Karim to come uh, to the front and answer those questions. Uh, the first question is Assalamu alaikum, Brother. Please tell us how it is not to your mind that I should change my religion. Uh, yeah, I need to the question. Well, uh, 
it's a really, really question that I can take and speak on this one. Uh, but base is this one. Basically, what uh, Ahmadiyya religion is claiming that uh, they are on the right path and they are the one who are following the Quran. As I just gave a couple of uh, revelations of Mirza Saab uh, from two razors and the telegram came, I mean, this cannot be the word of God. And if you go further in the box, you will find there are so many contradictions which uh, I showed you the book, which I we compiled that one. You can find yourself that this one. So the thing is, the contradictions and the lies that can change anybody's mind. But the condition is this: that person, I mean the Ahmadi, should read. They should study the books. And I said, 97% Ahmadis haven't touched the books. If you ask, maybe. They, they will say, oh yeah, I, I read the two books, I read five books, I read ten books, I read five books. But to, to believing a person, when you don't know about him anything, when you completely have no knowledge about him, how you can claim, how you can accept him. So the thing is, for me to study, and I can say, and when, if you have, uh, taken my card, there is a YouTube channel of mine where you can find my 600, more than 600 videos. I challenged them. I said, Mirza Ulami said, the person who have not read my books three times. So what the Mirza Ulami said, he said, if any enemy does not read my books three times, I doubt about his belief and he's a Munafiq. So the 90% they are Munafiqs. <laughs> And I'm the only one who have read more than three times, I'm sorry. <laughs> and I am the one who's right and who became changed. So that's the answer. Thank you. Is there an English translation of your book? I so then uh, I'll try my best. Uh, if I could get uh, the translation. Uh, but those are the writings, those are the real quotations uh, from his book. So that's why this is not, and unfortunately, if uh, I will make my wrong translation, they can challenge that one, oh, this is not it. So if anybody can help me out to voluntarily can do that one, I will appreciate and Allah will read off the reward. How was the Ahmadi religion? Created, I believe, if I'm uh, reading correctly, is that uh, yeah. whoever asking the question, religion created and by who? Well, the Ahmadiyya religion was created by Mirza Ulam Ahmed Kadiani. Uh, he was born in uh, 1839 or 40. Now, this is a funny thing. Let me tell you this story and you will enjoy this one. That how these Ahmadis follow their prophet. Look, if we get any word which is related to the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we just bend. That's for me. We cannot deny. On the other hand, Mirza Ghulam Imit Kadiani writes with his own pen in his kitab named Kitabu Buriya that I was born in 1839 or 40. This is this is his wording. This is what he writes. <clears throat> now the funny thing is this: his follower says, "Hey, you are a sick man. You don't know when you born. We know. What does it mean? No, no, no. We know today." Who were not there even? Oh, you was born in 1835, not 39. He says, I was born in 39. They say, no, you are wrong. We tell you, you born in 35. <laughs> there is a story behind this one. Because there was a challenge. 
there was a Mubala challenge and he died according to that challenge as per that challenge now to make that person who challenged and who did the Mubala and actually by the way that person was also like me he was his follower for 22 years and I followed unfortunately 50 years so he challenged him as per his challenge he died not to making him wrong they changed his date of birth because they cannot change the date of death <laughs> so Mirza Kulami created this one and uh, yeah I believe that's what it is this question I want to get uh, Mr. Kadiani's lecture if parents know in detail then they can tell to their kids. Is this for me or yeah. uh, um, would you? It's, it's about if somebody wants to get the Kadiani literature. Kadiani literature. Okay. <laughs> well, the Kadiani literature is available on their website. But keep it in mind, they are keep changing. They are keep changing. Now, I do have the original books and everything, but obviously uh, you can get from me or anything. Uh, yeah, but anytime, if you need any kind of reference or you want anything to know about that one, uh, you can contact me by email, by phone, or by through YouTube. On the same time, uh, like you can go on their website and you can find all the literature from their website. And their website name, if you want, I can give you guys that. Uh, can you please tell us of how he died? Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> That's a tough thing. And I, uh, believe me, I never like uh, to be honest uh, this one, but I will tell you the true story in their words. I, I will not use my wording. I will not use that uh, how I take. I will exactly tell the what are their words. Now, he was in Lahore and he was writing uh, his book. Now, he had the illness of uh, loose motions and something like that from the very beginning. When he was there, he became sick, had a loose motions, throwing up, vomiting, and the weakness is getting more and more and more. And at one time, he was not in a position to go to the washroom. So what they did, they made the arrangement in his in his bedroom in the corner of the room that from his bed he should go up to their field. But the next day the weakness is so much that even it's hard for him to take a few steps even. So the last time when he went he came back he fell down on his bed. Half of his body was on the bed, half of the body was on the floor. And these are like the statement by his wife. Her name, Nusra Jahan Begum, who is the mother of all the children, Mirza's children. Because he tried to marry another woman as well. It's another story, beautiful story about him. If somebody will ask, I will tell that. I, I just want to make you guys a little bit relaxed, so that's why I'm giving you this one. Because uh, the thing is, there are so much funny stuff. That, uh, okay. There are so much funny stuff about him that uh, that will give you an idea if you study, then you don't need to be a rocket scientist to recognize a prophet. You will say, come on, this is not even a gentleman cannot talk. So what he did, so he was half over there, half there, they took him and put on the bat and he told, these are the words, he told his father-in-law that Meer Saab Mujhe Wabai Haza Ho Gya Hai, like epidemic cholera we will say, yeah, 
he said to his father-in-law that I have epidemic cholera. You know, there was uh, one before a forecast, a prophecy, someone made that you will die with this. Now he died as per his own wording to his father-in-law. Now what the enemies play the game, they say that if he would have died with the cholera, then the government won't allow to take his body to back Kadian through train because they will refuse, they will say no, they cannot take it. But the thing is this one, a person whose forefather and he himself served the British government writing so many books according to his own statement, if I'm not wrong that that would be 50, the cupboards you can fill that, that this much I have written in the favor of the government. So the government and the doctors who were his own followers can issue any kind of a certificate that he died natural death or whatever the cause of that other than the horror. So he died in that situation. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Brother uh, Ahmed Kareem. Uh, we got all the questions answered. Uh, there's uh, this question, somebody says, uh, any li uh, lecture on Ismailis and uh, Khan coming soon? So we haven't thought about it, but uh, inshallah, in the future. Sure. Good things are coming, inshallah. This is just the beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, the last question is uh, going to be answered by Shah Jamal, and after that, uh, he'll have a concluding speech and dua, and inshallah, will conclude the program. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, about the last question, uh, any Ismaili or Al Khan uh, uh, muhadar or lecture. So, inshallah, I will schedule that in the future because every Sunday I give lecture uh, here in the same place at 6 p.m. at this time. Uh, these days the lecture is about the zero Quran, but inshallah when we finish next month we will start to talk about some sects of the religions, inshallah, just to make awareness. There is a question here about Isra al Maraj. You didn't mention anything about Isra al Maraj. Uh, also, from the false belief that they have, they believe that. Uh, uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed ayat al-Isra wal maraj Shabbat para in the Surah al-Isra on him and for him uh, so which is wrong this is the miracle of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and uh, uh, inshallah in the future we will uh, focus on the Khatm al conference on the uh, miracles of the Prophet as Sheikh Fayyad touched them today in his uh, speech uh, uh, because it's very important instead of insulting or attacking or swearing at anybody if we focus on mentioning the miracles of the Prophet we will make inshallah part of Khatm al in the future uh, uh, talking about all the miracles of the Prophet, he spoke, Sheikh Fayyaz, about the eye of Sayyidina Qatada radiallahu uh, an. You know, there is the spear of Hasa, the stones in his hand, and the, 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 the animal also spoke to the Prophet, Jid in Nakhla, which is the member uh, cried for the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, also in the battles of Islam, so, so many miracles. Inshallah, in the future we will make part of Khatm al conference speeches about the miracles of the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that will be the best solution for claiming uh, things which is not wrong or not right. Uh, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about the Yahud and Nasara, قَالُوا نَحْنُ أَبْنَاءُ اللَّهِ وَأَحِبَّاءُ قُلْ فَلِمَا يُعَدِّبُكُمْ بِذُنُوبِكُمْ بَلْ أَنْتُمْ بَشَرٌ مِمَّا خَلَقْ So if uh, you are not bashar or a human being, then why you die, why you get sick, why you uh, die like 
the, the story you heard, like this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means he's a human being. We are a human beings. And the only, and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a human being, but he's the prophet and the messenger of God. So inshallah ta'ala in the future we will uh, try to uh, include the conference, things like that. Uh, I would like in the end of this conference to thank all of you, inshallah, and especially the, the speakers who came from out of Calgary and they spend time and uh, they struggle to come and see you and to speak for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have noted that uh, was many speaker represents many organization, uh, different language, and I like to tell you uh, that is or those uh, are ayatullah. ومن آياته خلق السماوات والأرض واختلاف ألسنتكم وألوانكم. Some people they did not understand the Urdu, some other they don't understand the English or the Arabic. But Alhamdulillah, those are the miracles of Allah. I said, please listen to Urdu even if you don't understand. Listen to Arabic if you don't understand. To English if you don't understand. Because we knew that the speakers are talking about the deal of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the greatness of Islam that Allah has created all of us from different nationality, different color, different language. And that is ayatullah. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ in Surah al -Rum, and from the miracles of God that you have different backgrounds, different nationality, different colors, different languages. Uh, yeah, this Mu'tamar, inshallah, conference is very distinguished and we will keep doing it, inshallah, ta'ala, uh, every year. Uh, also, uh, the sima of this Mu'tamar, or the, one of the distinguishes of this Mu'tamar, that we did not attack anybody. We are not here to attack people or to insult their deen or their sect of religion. We are mentioning al the, the, the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the kitab, the sunnah, differentiating between haqq and batil, false and right. So we are focusing on that. That is also very important uh, to understand. Uh, uh, also, Brother Ahmad Jazawallahu Khairan uh, said that your responsibility from now on is to make da'wah, the true da'wah. Otherwise, the other sects of religion or the batil will attack the haqq. So if we do not conduct the real da'wah and follow the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, then other people can say you are terrorists and they are the true religion. This I like you to, to carry from this conference this very important information that if we do not talk about the right people will talk about the false and they can beat you because you are keeping silent you are not defending your sunnah you are not defending the quran the sunnah of the prophet you are not talking about the miracles of rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and also, we, we know that not only these people attacked Rasulullah We know the people in, in Europe and uh, in, in the, the Danish people and uh, uh, those who made the categories against the Prophet So it's important, inshallah, from now on to do this conference and talk about the miracles and the sunnah of the Prophet and the right belief and the right, the true aqeedah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Also, the last thing we benefited from this conference, the importance of the unity, the unity, and the demand of our community for the unity. That is very important. That's what we achieved today, alhamdulillah. And also, I like to make you comfortable at the same time that some people are, are, are uh, using Islam or, or attacking Islam, I like also you to believe in something, inshaAllah ta'ala. Because Allah said, وَإِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُ We shall protect. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, we shall protect this Quran. So don't worry about this Quran. And I like to tell you, we have very strong immune system. Immune system. If anybody said anything wrong about Al-Islam, we can discover him. Because we have the Quran. So don't worry about the future of Islam too much. But as Brother Ahmed said, we cannot sleep. We have to work. We have to conduct the da'wah. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يُدَافِعُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا He defends الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا He defends his, his religion. He defends his Quran. And he defends the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. So alhamdulillah, we have the sunnah of Rasulullah, we have the Quran that is the immune system so that will kill the infection the infection if any infection or sickness attack our community, attack our society, attack the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, we will be able inshallah with the memorization of the Holy Quran, with the understanding of the Quran and sunnah with the implementing the unity of the Muslim community, we could fight, inshallah, in the future, everything. Again, on behalf of the Muslim community of Calgary, MCC, and other organizations, every Muslim Sunni organization here, every Sunni mosque, I would like to thank you for being in this mosque tonight and uh, uh, participating in this important awareness awareness sessions uh, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you all to protect, your, to protect also your families to protect yourselves from any uh, uh, devil attack ameen wa sallallahu ala sayyidina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Allahumma taqabbal minna innaka anta samiyu al-alim tub alayna ya maulana innaka anta al-tawwabu rahim علمنا ما ينفعنا انفعنا بما علمتنا زدنا علما في الدين يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم وحد صفوف المسلمين اللهم وحد صفوف المسلمين اللهم وحد أمة الإسلام على كتابك وسنة نبيك يا رب العالمين اللهم انصر كتابك وسنة نبيك اللهم انصر المستضعفين من أمة محمد في مشارق الأرض ومغاربها يا رب العالمين اللهم إنا نسألك أن تعلي كلمة الحق عالية خفاقة فوق كل راية يا رب العالمين اللهم أظهر دينك في كل مكان يا الله يا كريم اللهم عليك بالمعتدين والظالمين والطواغين والمحرفين يا الله يا كريم صل على عبدك ورسولك سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وآخر دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين